All right, guys. I know it's uh, live quite a bit sooner than what we normally are. I know there's no two-week gap, but welcome and uh, good night. I want to welcome you guys to a very special campaign that I'm starting known as the Silver Sparrows. The name could possibly change. What our, what our party here decides to do, I uh, don't want to give too much away, but essentially these are a group of individuals that work for a secret organization that works in the shadows. And they have been hired for a job, and we are going to see what happens in their journey as they are partake in this obscure and ominous job that they've been hired for. So, before we get into tonight's session or session one of the gathering, uh, you guys will recognize uh, one at least one familiar face tonight. You have uh, Aiden playing in this uh, game. For, you guys know him as Kelrick from our other campaign. Uh, these are all friends of his and uh, players of his from another campaign that he runs on uh, YouTube. You guys can check that out. It's called Advantage from Flair. There should be links to it, I believe, in uh, both our Discord and our uh, description down below. So if you guys haven't looked at that, be sure you check it out. Uh, these are all players of his, and uh, I've come to love their, their campaign, and I watch it avidly whenever uh, I do find time between being working full-time and being a father and running the screen here with Friday Night Dice. So... It is difficult, but still to find the time. Uh, but anyways, Aiden, would you like to introduce everyone? Uh, yeah. Uh, so real quick, the campaign that he's referring to is one that I run. I've always run uh, remotely for our player, the players you see before you. Um, the focus of the campaign is, uh, if I had to describe it really shortly, would be uh, there's a cycle where basically magic becomes undone uh, every couple of thousand years on a loose cycle. It needs to be refounded again, uh, and through these players, uh, my focus as a DM is creating a story central to the characters, um, and if I had to give it a tagline, it's they all follow personal intrigues into a crowd of larger mystery. Um, but we have, uh, cycling from your top left and my top left, uh, Lissa and Zach. Say hi, guys. Hello. Uh, Howdy. And then on top right, we have my brother, Darrell. Bottom left, we have Dylan. Uh, there's some idiot in the center middle. And then off to the bottom right, we have uh, Caroline. Last but not least. So yeah, these are all players that I run my campaign for. Um, because of the holidays and everybody gets kind of crazy, uh, we, we went on a hiatus. And then personal uh, troubles came up for me. So it's looking like it was going to be a little bit uh, of a time before I could run again for these players. And Matt... And I were talking, and he said, well, you know, I could run something for them if you want. And I said, yeah, if you want to take care of my players. Um, and seeing as how playing in a campaign is far easier than running it, I was like, sure, I can spare four hours to, to join the game. So, um, four? I played I for do, six. I know, I know that you are gracious uh, or, or appreciative that, you know, my players want to play in your game, but thanks for taking care of them for when I can't run. Um, and it smells like we have <laughs> scheduling uh, troubles coming up. At some point in the future, so we'll see. But Balirisso will return one day. Wait, I'm be I'm being cared for right now. <laughs> in, in a way, well, we'll we'll see what happens. So, first thing we're gonna get into. I know we threw this together in literally a week. Uh, I had the overarching uh, thing down, but as far as uh, gold and stuff like that, we have not had time to discuss that. So I kind of set it up a little uh, a little different here. Uh, so starting from the top. Uh, Listen, Zach, if each of you, for which I don't have your characters in front of me, I know I'm going to get them here, but if each of you could give me your character's name and their passive perception. Uh, I can go first. My name is Janera. My passive perception is 17. Got it. Uh, my name is Kel. My passive is 10. All right, Drill. Durintar, passive 13. All right, uh, Dylan? Uh, Jax, and it's passive wisdom perception, right? Yes. 13. Aiden? Uh, Mezes, and 18. Passive perceptions in the screen. And uh, okay. finally, oh, me. Caroline. There are more, and I have a 15. 15? Yes. One second, I'm going to turn you up because you're right on my end. 
Everyone really has that problem. <laughs> that should should fix it. All right, so good evening, guys, and everyone. Welcome to the vast and ever-changing world of Tilstaria, a time where magic reigns supreme and the Varying Nations have spent years fighting for control of a commodity known as Aether. You guys know that these Aether Crystals are a high sought-after uh, commodity that is a little scarce throughout the lands, and it is the physical manifestation of the Arcane, or the Elements. In a city in the far north, these crystals have changed almost the world overnight as tinkerers and artificers have came together to find different ways of using Aether to create machinations and different mechanical things to further the uh, study of science and bring in a new age rather than an age of magic more of an age of industry but it has not ventured out much from the northern ages of the world so in other places of the world these things are still scarce and not most and not well known some don't even realize that they exist but for you guys, we find ourselves within the nation of Brawlhalla, Brawlhalla and Concord to be. A nation known for being a nation of people that value peace and knowledge over everything. Over the past few days, the seven of you have traveled from all your different corners of the globe to the wondrous and beautiful city of Brawlhalla, the capital of the Brawlhalla and Concord. This is known as the Gemstone City, or the City of Glass. As you guys approach, you can see the five towering pillars of this dark jade-like crystal towering over the skyline. It's, as the sun refracts through it, it almost makes the city sparkles. You can see deep colors of blue reflecting from the sapphire basin that the city sits upon. And these dancing lights and different wondrous rainbows just almost make an amazing view of a picture of this city. You guys can see the large outer stone walls of the city come into vision as you crest over the top of the peak of the east tower. And what you see is this large city of Brawlhalla. You can see the tall spiring tower of the Tranquil Athenaeum. All of you which would know is the largest uh, library within the, within the world. It contains a vast amount of wealth and knowledge within it. On the opposite side of the city you can see three tall towers of the Glass Citadel, where the former king used to live and now acts as both in which teaches the arcane arts and maybe a little bit of science. Here, what you guys are in is 1134 PT. Our story begins on the 38th day of Dwormus in the basement of the old ye old winch cavern in the Amethyst district of Brawlhalla. As each of you have found your different way to the city and for its well laden path streets, you guys come to the secret basin of this tavern where you with your contact member of the collection that is sent out all for each of you. And as you all descend down the staircase, you're met with a beautiful melody, a familiar lute, and a companion of yours of which you know. And as you guys enter in, you see his feet hooves cooked up onto the table in front of you, a chair leaned back, just playing a light melody. Zach, would you like to describe your character for me? <laughs> yes. Uh, so before you, you would see a shorter satyr, um, kind of in ostentatious looking robes, uh, kind of an open uh, skirt uh, to give lots of movement for uh, their smaller kind of furrier legs with hooves, uh, kind of lean back in a chair, playing a lute, just uh, relaxing, taking their time, kind of taking you all in. What you would see as you've uh, been here before is a another familiar figure in... Uh that is sitting off in the corner, one of which, uh, who is already within the city. And Dylan, would you like to describe your character? Um, I should have done a better job at creating an actual description. No, you're I good. am a, a high half-elf monk, um, about average average height. I don't, I'm not sure what average height. What is that, like five, four feet, five feet? For, uh, for an elf, I think you're like, uh, like five, six. six like five, six, six foot, something All like right, that. perfect. Somewhere yeah, there. we'll go with that. Four feet. Yeah. <laughs> Four feet. <laughs> sure, four feet. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Gotta be outliers. <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah, that is, that's me. Yeah, okay. Uh, I did send you a blip, I don't know if you saw it before the start of the session, on the type of uh, clothing that your uh, 
yeah. the order would wear. Just so I can describe that if you want, because I I have it. That that is if you would like to be dressed that way. So that is just. Um. I'm trying to decide because I I was thinking about it earlier. Okay, um, we can come back to it while you think on it. No, I, I'll say I I won't be wearing those. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So, uh, as the two of you have already entered the tavern, as you were here in days prior, uh, you would see uh, some familiar faces as the rest of the party under the stairs. And uh, starting from the top, Alyssa, would you like to describe your character? Sure. Um, my character walks in mostly robes, hooded, um, very covered, but as far as face and hands, you can see it's she's very humanoid, but it looks almost confusing. Um paper white skin and hair, uh, very light blue eyes. And uh, not standing too far behind you, descending the stairs, Caroline, would you like to describe your character? Uh, sure. Fairmore is uh, about five feet, a uh, high elf, um, so he has very like luminous bronze skin, bright copper hair, and like kind of amber eyes that look lit from within. Um, he's not trying to hide. He's got very, like, bright cobalt clothes on. Very nice. And standing next to you, we see Aiden. Would you like to describe your character? Uh, yeah. I'm probably a race many of you haven't seen before, but you all, I assume we know each other? You all either know each other or know of each other's deeds and accomplishments. Okay. It's possible you would know that I'm a Triton, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm a mostly, almost... Almost normal colored, but with hints of blue in the skin. Uh, very angular features, uh, kind of hair, kind of blonde, put up in a, almost a half bun, and standing there in full plate um, with a symbol in the center is kind of this sea and this, this swirling maelstrom, um, and there's a green emerald in the center of his chest plate. He's got a shield as well that kind of matches this general design. Uh, all the armor is plate, but almost shimmers with a iridescent look to it. As you guys have all entered, and you can hear the thud of loud and heavy footsteps coming from above. And as you guys turn around, you see the large hulking figure, and Jarrell, would you like to describe your character? Yes. You see coming down the staircase a Luxodon, standing a solid 6'5", tall, broody, wearing full plate armor, with a red inner skin and a golden rim around it along various places on his shoulder, but also running down his snout. He looks at all of you, and in between each one of you, his eyes change his colors, but silently walks to the corner without saying a word. Ready to be drafted D1, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys all come in, you find yourselves in the basement of the, uh, the old winch here, and it's, it's a modest ta a tavern of sorts, but... You guys have seen better through through your travels, and most of you could definitely afford better. Uh, but this is where you were told to meet, and it would be unwise for you to receive or to refuse the summons of the Blue-Eyed Raven. So you guys came with haste. Most of you uh, seeing this as an opportunity to make a name for yourself here within the court, maybe move up the ranks of yourselves within the Silver Sparrows. You guys gather around and taking seats at the different areas down here. There's a small little bar, but no bartender. It seems as if it's self-serve down here. But as you guys are sitting, the candlelit uh, chandeliers that hang and the hearth lights begin to dim. You guys all hear an echo of a voice coming throughout the room. Not as if it's being said from anywhere, almost as if it echoes throughout your mind. You guys look and watch at the staircase as the room darkens and the lights begin to fade. Watch as almost a veil is pulled back, revealing a pitch black swirling portal as a man steps out. Ah, I see you all have made it. It is good that you would accept uh, such a prestigious summons. The raven would be pleased. What you guys see is the familiar sight of Perseus. You see a large, dark skinned human man uh, with blue eyes and long black hair that's kind of been pulled back and been held up with like a hand appears to be wearing uh, seafoam green linen robes that are just beautifully crafted with a dark blue sash going across his waist. And on his chest you can see the Brawl Holland Crest, which is an open book depicting a key on one page and an emerald serpent on the other. Oh, 
Well, I'll say that is uh, quite the entrance you have there, friend. Um, can I ask why you've uh, gathered us here today for a... Uh, to what end? Especially well, in this rinky-dink bar. As most of you know, we tend to work in the shadows. Sometimes that brings us to more luxurious places. And sometimes that brings us to more quaint holes-in-the-wall places like this, where we can work without being seen and most would not follow. For the people that happen to come to this bar and serve as patrons, they they tend to leave a little more intoxicated than they arrive, so their faces are unlikely to be removed. But we have summoned each of you for your repute or your skills. Each of you has a chosen skill set of which we think would help out in this. Nevertheless, what it appears is that the order we've been contacted by the Order of the Bronze Salamanders he motions at uh, you, Jackson, says, uh, we have been contacted by them about a particular item that has gone missing. And it seems that this item is of great value to the Order of the Bronze South. It comes from a faraway land and extremely powerful. We don't know the extent of what it does or how it works, but rumor has it that it could level cities, could destroy armies. So, have rumors, have some of our own thoughts of what is going on, but what we do know from the Order is that one of the curators that was supposed to be on guard for the item has also gone. He is assumed to either be dead, in pursuit, or the culprit. His name is Calgoris. Did know my character know Calgoris' name? Uh, none of your guys' characters besides Jax would know. Sorry, did he at any time mention what the item was? Uh, he did not, but you can always ask. Yeah, no, um... Can I ask what this item is we're looking for? I don't necessarily know what I'm looking for. So, the item, uh, known as the Blade of the Primes. A, a blade that was crafted and forged in a faraway land known as Zahara. Uh, a distant land in which, uh... The people that use magic there are a bit different. They they seem to stand more along the uh, the ways of sorcerers and other other various things. They tend to stick to their bloodlines. Uh, it's a peculiar place. Not a much like your own, not a much like you see here, but there there's only humans. It is a a peculiar city. But our main lead is here. Why you were summoned here to Brawlhalla? The item has gone missing here, of course, but our main lead is on the Chancellor here within the Brahalan Concord of Alexandra Altaris. As her head advisor, uh, which she does not know I am here, but I know that she's been doing research into crimes, and has visited Zahara in the past, and I do know that in days prior she was in contact with Calboris, and if my intuition is correct, I would say that they too are our culprits, and to be investigated. Either Altaris is being warped and used by Calvaris <coughs> for her information, or she's a part of it. There's not much... When we, Go ahead. when we say investigated, do we mean investigate the documents of the people? There are two different ways I like to do things. Well, it's summoned for, for reasons unlike... Uh, more reasons why we have chosen you than others. And for those reasons are because of your skills. We would not have chosen you if we did not think you were capable of completing the job in whatever manner you see fit. What I can say is I've worked with Alexandra for at least 30 years now, and I cannot believe in my right mind that she would do something like this, but everyone has their own stories. Everyone has their own secrets. What I can tell you is that there is a gala tomorrow night within the Glass Citadel for a congratulations for those that are the recent winners of the Aether Tournament, a mages tournament that is held within the uh, city here for the students that attend the school. And I believe this might be a perfect opportunity for you guys to infiltrate her manor within the Diamond District and perhaps investigate what you might find. Perhaps something in her research will show you some hints of what might be going on. And perhaps you might even come to find the blade itself, should she be the culprit. Can't say, 
what you'll find, as I've not been with anywhere but the first floor of the manor. But I do know that she has an observatory on the third floor, and if she kept anything important, be there. <clears throat> My character at this point is going to say, Move! The third floor is where I belong. <clears throat> what, I, could, what was the name of the man who was supposed to be guarding this this uh, uh, blade? Al Goris. Awfully job, Gerald. <laughs> and what were the names of the people that you had suspicion of? Uh, Chancellor Alexandra Altaris. Alexandra Altaris? Yep. So, being a mortar, or, an, or being uh, a member, what two words there? Being a member of the Order of the Bronze Salamanders, uh, Dax, you would know that uh, Chancellor Alexander Altaris is a beloved ruler of the Brawlhall and Concord, uh, an elected chancellor that has ruled for, for the last 10 years and is in fit to rule until she comes until she comes of age that she find is not worthy. She is the first of her kind with uh, to be granted this uh, high honor because of how much she has accomplished and how much she and how much good she has brought to the nation uh you would know that she is also uh a well-accomplished mage she graduated from tigarth academy within the zark plus empire and is granted the rank of archmage it's probably the one by this backstory well if we were to run distraction genera you would be a perfect pick as uh general distraction depending on how things go i've been uh known to be distracted in my time uh i'm happy to do it again i think uh galas are right up my alley yeah that's what i was referring to i hope y'all bought your fancy robes it sounds like we're going to a party i was about to ask a dress code i wasn't intending to um give up my implements well here here's the thing the gala is being held within the glass citadel and my thoughts were you guys go investigate her home if you would like to attend the gala and think you would get more information there that is uh a good op or a well option but she lives within uh black manor which is it's on the grounds just below the glass citadel she would be within distance to make her way there should see something happen but if you guys can make your way in and out without being seen i believe you might find some information or at least that's the hope. Pity so this is her home say that again sorry sorry it said pity i'd hope to wear a dress <laughs> you said this was her home uh this is where the chancellor lived uh, yeah And at this moment, other than this curator, you don't have any other suspects. Uh, they are our two prime suspects. Uh, we are still investigating. Uh, whoever did did this job, it uh, they knew what they were doing. They left behind no trace, no evidence of anything or anyone being there. The only thing we know is that there was one man that was supposed to be on duty. Is there any past known connection between this chancellor and this curator? Uh, we have known that they have uh, met on occasion throughout the, the past and have actually met within days prior uh, on multiple occasions. Uh, to my knowledge, I do not know what. A trunk would raise in the air. <sighs> Smells suspicious enough to me. I would like to investigate the third floor of Alexandria's office. Fran, yeah. I'm not quite sure uh, how you're going to get up to the third floor. Can it support I you? I have my ways. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand why we don't do both. <clears throat> we can do both. I imagine the night is long and the party will continue for a while. It will. Uh, Kendra does enjoy her parties. She is a dancer. 
Is there any type of security system? Uh, Alexandra that has two mages with her at all times. Those of which will be accompanying her to, to the gala tonight. I am normally also one of her guards as I accomplish swordsman, but I fear I will not be uh, attending the gala this e or tomorrow evening. Uh, my hope is that I can run interference with some of the other council members and make sure none of them are within Black Manor to give you guys maybe some more. One thing I will tell you is, uh, from being within the manor, there are three possible entryways. Of course, there is the front and the back door, which is the obvious choice for some. But the other two are a little more sneaky. There is a, there is a secret passageway that runs through the sewer systems under the city. It leads into the wine cellar underneath, underneath the Black Manor, and is my personal choice for how I think you guys should enter, but the problem is, is that the sewers are known for those of, uh, how do you say, a less likely uh, patrons. The, uh, maybe some of the most unseen people fed through there and don't want you guys to run into it. Not that saying you couldn't handle it, we're going a bit of a time crunch. The last and final way is probably the most risky, but also the most efficient. Is above her observatory, there is a massive glass dome. Could you guys simply just find entry through the dome on the roof of the manor? You would find yourself directly in her observatory, but the downside is, is most of the guards would probably be alerted, and you would have very little time to search. The... So there's no hatch on the dome. You're just saying we just parachute in like uh, Rainbow Six operators? As far as I know, that is the, the best way to do it. Whatever that means. Druntar is going to pipe up and say... I think that you all should pursue the top entry, but I'm going to enter through the front door and I'll create a distraction. I feel okay. like in another universe we've planned a repelling window entry before and it didn't go so well. I think it went perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. You're good. Do we have the ability to cut glass with thieves tools? You can sure try. No. There will be no worry, for all the guards will be downstairs by the time you arrive. However, our timing must be impeccable. I'm not sure I'd consider that wise, but the, the one of the main problems is I'm not exactly the quietest person. Me neither. That's not also why I'm not going through the ceiling. We're going to crawl through some sewers. Friends, I, I would imagine for this to be successful, they would have to not know that we have uh, seen what they know. Uh, I would recommend that we all travel as a group and try to be as sneaky as possible. Um, I'm a very your... large individual. I cannot sneak. Oh, I understand that. Uh, but I think we leave that in a last resort. I... A Warhammer in my hand is going <laughs> to thud the ground very hard and say, uh, I'm going to go through the front door one I... way or the other. I'm going to find the information we're looking for. I understand it's a party and that there will be partaking in certain beverages, but what if the wine cellar is locked? Uh, well, I, I do have this gadget. Uh, I bought it from a man within Baldwin Port. It's, uh, it sets in front of you a tiny, uh, bronze ball, and, uh, whichever one of you would like to add it to your inventory, it is called Fizzle's Knocking Hand. Ooh. Of course it is. Take it, monk, take it. Okay, sure. What I don't know what it is, but yeah, yeah. It would be too hard for me to get on the inside if we need someone. <clears throat> I do believe you are the, uh, the best person. Probably one of the main reasons you were chosen for this job. For infiltrating. That's part Assuming of the that I know what some of the attendees look like, the very important ones. Well, I'm sure I could find a few paintings somewhere, and I'm sure you could easily replicate it from that. Sounds good. That's part of the problem, Druntar, is perhaps less louder folk like you and I will be relegated to keeping watch. Early warning system. Breaking in the front door would not be easy, nor um, clandestine in the slightest. And repercussions would follow. Tell me, I assume you would not prefer agents of the Blue-Eyed Raven to fail at such a task and blow the investigation wide open. That device is... Uh, helpful 
but I'm afraid I might have to ask for something more to leverage. Oh. It is an Archmage's house, after all. I do have a few things to add. And <laughs> some may come in handy, but I do have an item for each of you. He'll set down, set down a box, and as he opens it, there are three rings there. Uh, the first one that uh, catches your eye, Duratar, or did I say that right? The Duratan, right? Oh, so. Duratan. Duratan? Okay. Dur I, Dur I've Dur played too much Dur of Warcraft in my day, and there's a main character called Duratar, and I keep going to that. So, the first item that would catch your eye uh, is a small uh, golden ring, and on the front it depicts the uh, symbol of uh, the goddess Zarina, and takes it, plucks it out, and hands it over to you. This, I believe, is something you might find handy. As he places it in front of you, this is no goddess ring. You can look it up on DD your inventory. Uh, the next. Uh, immediately, I recognize the name, and I say, "Oh." My goddess has selected me once more. The next is another ring. Uh, Jax, you, I believe, would benefit most from this one. And she will set it in front of you. This is known as the Wishful Ring of Armor. Like you could add it to your inventory. And the final ring she, uh, he will pick up and uh, set in front of you. Uh, Aiden, I'm going to put your name with Theus. You're muted. Mezes. Okay. This is known as the Ring of Repeating. Uh, nothing special, uh, too special about it, but I do believe you would find this most useful. Uh, next, for our lovely musician, uh, and he sprint, sets out a lute in front of you, and you may add uh, Scofield's Wondrous Words to your. Right? Well, thank you kindly. Got the name of it. Well, this ring is fucking wild. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, finally, uh, for Jax, for you, we have uh, befitting. This is a job uh, befitting your rank. We think it is time for you to promotion from uh, to senior inquisitor, and these are your inquisitor robes. He will set them out in front of you. Feel free if uh, you do not care for the color of the burnt orange to have it dyed whichever way you fit. But you may add those to your inventory. Ooh, I will. Wait, what, sorry, what are they called again? Inquisitor's robes. Got it. Last okay. one. Or, no, I got two more. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Uh, you're muted, Aiden. I was just remarking how sensitive the Blue Yeti is. <laughs> Don't fart. <laughs> for wine earlier. Uh, for our tinker in the group, we have uh, something of... A new item, one that I uh, actually recently picked up from a traveling tradesman, and he will slide across a gun to the table, across the table to you, and you may add a Aether Boomstick to your inventory, Caroline. Interesting. This will do nicely. Why am I? I I'm freaking drawing a blank. <clears throat> really should have just. Down of well, while he's rummaging through that crazy chest, I mean, let's talk logistics here. The front door assault won't go well. We'll have <laughs> maybe a mere few more moments than a we, jumping we should, into the dome. We, uh, you're talking about the, the actual observer. I will go through the front door and I will cause a distraction upon the right time. This distraction will not cause me any peril whatsoever, but it will draw all the guards to the ground for. Yeah, from I'm there... That's a one-way trip yeah, for you. It will How not... I go through the front door? They will be so much more concerned with my distraction. They will not <clears throat> notice the 400-pound elephant in the room. 
how about I go through the front door instead? I, I think that might be a better idea. And uh, right on the spot, as long as nobody else besides our group can see, I will change into a red tiefling. Well, that's a handy trick. Well, If you truly feel you can distract an entire building's worth of guards... <clears throat> Not a distraction. Run. I could potentially look very similar to one of them, as if I had received an invitation to the party. I waltz through the door and make sure everything's okay on the inside. This is a rabbi. I thought we were talking about yeah. breaching the Black Manor. It is. Yeah, I, I'm confused. I thought we were doing the Black Manor first. There's the Glass Citadel, which is the home of the Gala, and underneath it is the Black Manor, which is her home. I got him, I got him confused. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Breaking into an Archmage's house and not covering our tracks is going to lead to us being found later. Wait. If anything, we 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 need to scope out the manor itself because I we still don't. I mean, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what entry points. Uh, if there's any way we can maybe scale up to a uh, second floor or to a roof. Well, we were given the intel. Let's scout based on that. I think that sounds like probably the best idea we could do, Drew and Tar. If you're a, uh, if you and Mizas are a little concerned about uh, your. Uh, Stealth. I got. I got something I could probably help you with if you're concerned about being loud. Well, we'll see what I can whip up, but I can always doff this armor and be a little bit quieter. But how long till this party starts? A day. Oh, a day. We have a whole day. To I scout. thought it was today. Uh, well, for you, uh, I forgot that this item was slide across a massive mall, and. This mall that he slides across is just glowing with bright uh, red and orange flames that don't seem to burn anything uh, as it touches them, but it does give up a, a small warmth as you pick it up and you can add the Agrim Mall of Flames to your... Uh, and... Oh! Oh, is that two-handed? Watch me two-handed. <laughs> Okay. Jesus. Okay. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> one handed thing. Uh, make sure to read the Thanks. description. It does more than what it says. Uh, so, uh, one thing I have noticed uh, when I was looking through this, uh, there is, I do know the items that I've passed out, uh, and he's looking at you, Genera, and he says, I do understand that my yours might not have been all that great or all that special. Uh, but it is, it is a wondrous item. Uh, one thing I will add is, uh, we have another one that uh, we meant to have for you, it just has not been delivered yet, so I hope that this can take its place. Uh, hopefully the others should arrive in the next day or so, whenever they arrive, that delivery man will take uh, this, let's just say the raven's not happy about your item. It's all right, Perseus. I uh, <clears throat> I have understood my my place and let's just say parties for a little while, you know. So, uh, you will then toss each of you a bag of coins, and for this, uh, starting at the top with Alyssa, roll a percentile dice for me. Forty-four. You get uh, 544 gold pieces. Nice, thank you. All right, uh, Genera, roll your percentile dice. Nine zero ninety. Holy shit, you get uh, 900 gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Jarrell, please roll your uh, percentile dice for me. That's a great old 34. 34, you get 340 gold pieces. Uh, and then, uh, trying to get everyone's name. Uh, Jax, roll your, uh, percentile dice for me. Uh, do you mean roll, roll the d10 as well, or just the uh, percentile? Uh, yeah, you roll them both together, so okay. one's the 10's digit, and one's yep. the other one. Uh, 25. 25, you get 250 gold pieces. 
Uh, Mazaeus. Gonna have a struggle with that name. Hey! 22. 220 gold pieces. Uh, and then, uh, and I, I misspoke, Kel, I apologize. There's 440 gold pieces. Okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, all good. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, last but not least, Caroline, roll your, uh, percentile dice for me, please. I'm struggling with your, uh, is it just there more? Is that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there more. I just want to make sure I'm saying. I believe... That's a big ol' six. Six. You get 60 gold pieces. <laughs> I am sorry. Oh no. Damn. <laughs> Looking forward to being the poor one. <laughs> I'm broke as bitch over there, Jesus. You hate to see it. <laughs> this is a uh, payment for each of your last jobs you have completed, uh, as this is the first time you guys have made your way to uh, one of the collection's uh, local houses. So we do thank you for your guys' work and those that you have done. While some of you were on maybe some more smaller jobs, some of you were on some larger jobs, uh, we do appreciate it nonetheless. But this job, the payment is more or less not money, but a higher ranking within the order. For if you guys complete this, you guys will no longer be members of Silver Sparrows. No, then you guys will be uh, being reporting directly to the Owl himself. A part of his elite guard. Well, Perseus, I uh, enjoy the sound of that, and I think my compatriots would as well. Well, I am glad to hear it. Uh, if you guys do need anything, there are plenty and many wondrous different shops and various things that are for sale throughout the Brahan Concord. Please uh, have your fill with whatever you guys might need to buy for the for this journey or this adventure, uh, whatever you guys see it as, but nevertheless, you guys should be able to find whatever you need here within the city. Not much I can buy with this. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, um, don't worry, my uh, my friend. I think uh, I could splurge for the two of us. That'd be most generous. That remains to be seen. You seem to be one of the ones with the most contacts in the city. We'll have to lean on you for more than just money. Well, I've, uh, <clears throat> let's just say I've, I've toured around for a little while. I, I know some people here, some people there, potentially some people in places you might not expect, but uh, we'll see if it comes in handy. Well, a giant trunk is going to tap you on the shoulder and say, I want to get to know these people. <laughs> Well, my friend, I think for a couple coin, we could, uh, we could arrange that. I know a place, a quiet little corner in a bar. You got a hard exterior, but, uh, I think I could melt through it. Inside, there <laughs> might be some squish left. Anyway, uh, Perseus, I do thank you for your time and information, and I do not mean to pry... But I cannot help to uh, to notice the uh, the level of <clears throat> just sheer awe and appreciation you seem to hand to Chancellor uh, Alturis. Um, and forgive me if I'm being a little forward, but do you have uh, potentially personal motivations in this story? Uh, we are extremely close with. Perhaps, probably the main reason I was not selected to investigate this, while I am close and could easily access the the three do probably see me as a bit of a, maybe I'm as a compromised agent. So, I am here as your contact, and I've been instructed that if I do not give you, provide you with information, which and help you guys along with the job that, uh, Let's just say I might not be around much longer. DM, can I, while he's saying that, pay very close attention to his body language? Yeah, um, I, maybe I he's holding to... something back. Sure, make an I was about check. to say. <clears throat> Am I allowed to as well? I mean, I yeah, go I got sus immediately. If there's if there's 
personal entanglements. <clears throat> they be fucking. <laughs> Uh, 15 plus 4, 19. 12 plus 8, natural, or unnatural 20. Oh! Dirty, dirty 20 and a 19, okay. Uh, both of you notice that, uh, when he speaks of, uh, El Terris, he speaks in a very endearing manner, uh, and a very high-spoken, he's, uh, almost, whenever he spoke, uh, about her being a suspect, you could tell as almost if he was appalled and, like, upset and didn't really want to be viewing the, this nonsense about her uh, in his words in his, uh, so you can definitely get the sense that there's probably something going on between the two of them but who knows so I understand these whole blue eyed ravens are you know protected by the law and all that kind of stuff but what's to stop me just from saying no and them finding out that you tried to enlist our help I'm enjoying uh, I'm afraid I don't follow. Who who is who would be uh who would you be saying to the collection? Uh, to breaking into somebody's house who you may have some conflict with. Uh, I mean, if you do not wish to to take the job, that is yours to uh to do. That is your your right. But uh, do know that refusing a, a job of this magnitude from this sort of call, uh, does come with repercussions. Right, but what you're doing is frowned upon, right? Well, throughout the collection, not necessarily. This is what we do, Les. Work in the shadows. We take on odd jobs that people Fair. do not want no, to right. know about. And, believe me, uh, if this blade can do what we've been told it can do we don't want people to know that it's out there are you afraid Jax I think what my friend is trying to say is your personal entanglements has just complicated the idea of you being the contact for this job now of course I would never be so bold as to request a direct meeting with the owl but you can see how our hesitance has just jumped I tenfold I can't understand uh being, at this uh, at this point in time, Durantar is gonna walk straight up to you, not even six inches apart, slamming his warhammer down on the ground, and say, "I have dedicated my entire life to one goal, and that has been the Silver Sparrows. I guarantee you, upon my hammer alone, if you are misleading us, it will only cause your own end. Do you understand?" Make an intimidation check. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's a grand old five. Uh, so as this... Uh, Caramore laughed. <laughs> Burst out laughing. As this... Uh, also, colored, this elephant's a ca character, cartoon character. <laughs> as this caramel-colored uh, person, uh, Perseus, looks up to you, as you say this, uh, and you look down, just beneath your trunk, there's a blade to your throat. Sir, I will remind you that I am your superior. While I have not been chosen to take on this task, and that does bother me a little bit as it is right in my neck of the wood, where I am the one that you answer to, I do recognize that you guys' two plot were chose for a reason. I respect that. But I will not take threats lightly. Perseus, you had my curiosity, but now you have my attention with this. I am, shall we say, invested. Oh, I, I quite hope so. And I'm going to walk over the corner and fuck off. <laughs> I'd like to play a sad sound on my loot as he walks away. <laughs> okay. World's smallest loot. <clears throat> <laughs> I think everyone has personal entanglements of their own, you know? We can all understand, right, Bard? I think I <clears throat> catch your drift. A woman of her depths would not involve me in such an agency with such entanglements. My goddess would not allow such a situation to broach the importance that the collective the collection gives to her. 
I could offer you a different goddess. <laughs> I'm all right. I've managed to both have a god and a goddess. Congratulations. It is the only reason for existing. Well, I think I might politely disagree with that. But, uh... <clears throat> Perseus, do you have any other uh, pertinent information for us? Or, uh... Not at the present time. Uh, would you guys need me? Uh, I know you guys are quite capable individuals. Simply send me a message. I will be able to meet with you here within within the day. Uh, should you also need to meet with me and you cannot contact me by magical means, simply speak with Halas upstairs, the bartender. Sorry, Alice? Halas? Halas. H-A-L-L-U-S. Before we squander on out of here, you wouldn't by any chance know where uh, the Chancellor is right now. Uh, I believe she is uh, meeting with the different families of the mages that participated within the tournament over the past few days. And congratulating those that have graduated. Uh, tournament? <clears throat> yeah, the Aether Tournament. Mage there is, uh, Mage Tournament. Sure. Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So she will be visiting with each of their individual families throughout the day, and then tomorrow we will be throwing the gala for the champion. Yep. Well, I'm good. If that is all, then I should be getting back. I have been gone quite a while, and it might go a little suspicious if my presence goes unnoticed for too long. I am head advisor to... If I'm away for too long, might, uh, she might be suspicious of me. With that, he will basically uh, pull, basically the same way you guys saw before, and as he pulls back that veil through, uh, like, basically pulling back a curtain within, like, the plane in front of you, uh, and it just sees, like, pitch black swirling shadows on the other side, and as it opens, the all the light from the room starts to dim. He steps back, and the curtain closes behind you. Counter spell. No, I'm kidding. What did you say? <laughs> I, I joked about <laughs> casting counterspell. I can't <laughs> well, I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of this entanglement. Uh, let's at right least right. scope out our situation. We don't have to commit to anything at this moment. It all sounds actually rather standard to me. Cloak and dagger, accomplish what needs to be done. Is it standard to be boning the suspect? It's well, well, making sure that nobody is. Are we sure? Are we sure he time. doesn't have the blade? <clears throat> I'd Why would he it, approach us if he had the blade? Uh, misdirection. Friends, I think at this point, before we continue our conversation, perhaps we um, <clears throat> move this to quieter oh. caverns, Sorry. different pastures, if I you will. Besides, I think we have uh, some shopping, some supplying to do. Yes. Uh, DM, what time of day is it? Uh, it is basically uh, twilight. It is just after nightfall. Okay. Yeah, let's at least get out of here first. Yep. You're right. Let's go get some stuff. Wizard anywhere that's in mind. Constantly keep track exactly what I know. I was about to ask you, or I was about to say it is exactly, but I can't do that anymore. <laughs> Rip. Oh. Uh, side note, uh, because I never asked you, uh, Kel, which, uh, which goddess or god of the Pantheon did your paladins, uh, subscribe to? Um, I don't have it pulled up right now, I can't remember the name, but I will, I will get back to you on that. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, so I cool. have my, my note up. Yes. Alright. Um, assuming I am probably one of the more familiar with the city, I would like to, um, do I have an idea of like what kind of shops there would be what might still be open at this hour of night uh, so at this at this time of the day you would get the sense that uh most of the shops at least uh those that are like general stores or magic stores of those sorts are probably closed down for the night and would be open for second things such as taverns and bars and uh and those establishments would still would still be open open for the night uh, perhaps even the training grounds would be open if you guys would like to venture there. But 
uh, just to give you guys a brief overview of the city, uh, you guys would know that uh, their city is divided up into different districts. The one of which you are in now is the Amethyst District, which is more of like where a lot of you can find the barracks for the military, you can find the training grounds, you can find the kind of backwater areas, the lower income areas of the city. Not, not to the point of like uh, basically walking into the ghetto, but uh, these are definitely some of the more uh, the darker sides of the city within the Amethyst, which is why you guys came here and why your guys' location is here within the Guild Winch Tavern here. You guys would also know that there is uh, the Cobalt District, which is more for the common folk. It has the inns at most of the taverns, uh, maybe some more nicer places to stay. You would know that a majority of the, of the military that don't live uh, on the barracks and live with their families live within the Cobalt District. Uh, you would also know that this is uh, home to most of the craftsmen and things like that. You would know that the higher ranking, the nobility and council of the city uh, live within the Diamond District, which is uh, where you guys would see the Citadel. You would know that that is also where you find Black Manor. And then on the opposite end of the town, you guys would find Sapphire District, which is home to the scholars and where you guys would find uh, see the Tranquil Athenaeum, which is the massive library. And finally, in the center of town, you guys would see, uh, you guys would know, is the Ruby District, which is home to, to the different churches and religious locations of the uh, seven main gods and goddesses that are uh, worshipped throughout, throughout the land. Uh, just a quick clarification, which one of those was the Athenaeum located in? Uh, that that would have Sapphire. Yep. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wasn't sure. <clears throat> I will, um, knowing that most of the taverns and inns, I will begin to lead them to the Cobalt District to not necessarily uh, top tier in, but let's, let's let's aim for like middle ground. Okay. Uh, so as you are kind of traveling through uh, perhaps the Cobalt District, and you're kind of pointing out, and you guys are looking in, here at night as the uh, the two moons above kind of shine down and casting light above uh, throughout the city. You guys can see the uh, a little bit of a better view uh, of the Bra of Brahalla here, the homes that are made of this crystalline glass sort of uh, type of texture. You can see the different uh, ways the light reflects through the crystals, like almost creating like these dancing lights and sparkle effects throughout the entire city which is why it is known as the City of Glass. Uh, but you do come through and you eventually find your way uh, to a familiar place that you would know, uh, Genera, and also Jax, you might have uh, visited a few times throughout your time within the Calamander, known as the Rose Room, which is a uh, large building of white stone with these uh, two massive marble pillars on uh, and side that kind of lead up to a uh, large balcony on the front that has kind of like a small terrace up there where you guys can see a set of patrons all sitting out. You can hear the uh, basically yelling and uh, screaming and cheering of families that are celebrating their uh, their recent victories of their of their children and their loved ones. Eighth or tournament, but it is uh, it is a nice celebration. So you guys get the sense you can probably go throughout the city unnoticed. <clears throat> uh. I'm assuming the Rose Room is a uh, a tavern or an inn that we could get boarding at, or would I not know that? Uh, you, you would know that. Uh, you would also know that there is a, a, separate ta a second tavern that is more high class and uh, more expensive, but also has a lot more amenities, which is the Marbled Equinox, located within the Diamond District. Uh, located within the Diamond District, closer a little more to the nobility and some of the higher class citizens, it does carry a bit of heft in its weight of gold. You would know this uh, through your travels. But you would also know that they also have more amenities, things that they can offer. You would know that when stores are not open, they can find things for you. You would know that they have stables uh, where you can get horses if needed uh, connected to, to the tavern, and that they have a bathhouse also connected. A little more high-scale place. Uh, one of which you have frequented before, uh, and you would know to be 
very high class. But having known and been at both places, uh, either would suffice for what you guys are looking for. Uh, as we walk into this district, I want to change my uh, skin tone to just like a flesh tone, um, like an olive-ish. It doesn't matter, just not stark white. I'll lead them to the rose room. We don't need to ball out night one. Well, <clears throat> so as he leads you guys through uh, through the streets, and uh, you guys come across uh, across the rose room, and you enter, and you, as I said, you can hear the cheering of people celebrating. You can see sets of different groups of people sitting off in the corners, some uh, pouring large, like littered bottles of wine everywhere, large tankards uh, all everywhere. You can hear people just. Screaming, yelling, a couple people singing. There's a small band performing off off in the corner, and uh, behind the bar, you would see a uh, very uh, flustered and almost uh, panicked, but still uh, fairly attractive uh, half elfin woman that is dressed in uh, a long blue uh, blue dress that comes to, cuts down to a, a deep. Oh, well, that she's a little flustered as it appears she's the only one taking care of the tavern tonight. I will, uh, <clears throat> I'll just lead them to like an empty table, whichever one I can find. Ideally something off, uh, sure. not in the corner, but kind of near one of the edges of the room. Sure. Uh, easy enough. You guys can make your way through through the crowd. No one's really paying paying mind to you guys. A few people kind of ooh and ah at the sight uh, of a satyr and a luxodon and even a triton. Uh, not really knowing what a triton is, and they're all sitting there and they're like kind of trying to guess uh, what, what he is. And like, skin blue. It basically as he walks by and you guys find uh but you guys do find a small corner that's a little bit away from everyone else uh just across from the bar on the far end of the room um i actually want duranta to start picking up any glasses he sees from abandoned tables and tear carrying them over to the bar sometimes you know like two under one two under the other and then one in his trunk just okay. five at a time helping to clean up because he's sees that this bartender is obviously under overwhelmed and for some reason it seems like it's something that he just feels like doing you know so as you do that she sees you coming up oh my goodness thank you so much i have not had time to clean off those tables i will be with you guys shortly should you need drinks take your time and then with trunk and arm clink and then setting them down on the bar going for another five oh. while you're over there can you get us uh, some ales Right on it. And, uh, I don't know if I'm actually going to get ales, but I call it out anyway. <laughs> okay. So, uh, <clears throat> friends, what do we think of our situation here? I know it's a little precarious. I just wanted to get out of uh, potentially prying eyes and ears. Say, so scope it out, see what's going on. not make any rash decisions. I think that'd probably be wise. See what we're dealing with before we commit to any plans of action. Well, what does the gala offer us? Uh, I consider it to be almost nothing at this point. <clears throat> Except for maybe our fine, uh, fine woman here in a dress as she wanted. Into. I would argue that the gala would offer us <clears throat> uh, the Chancellor and potentially other individuals of stature in a uh, in a setting where they may be more amiable to our lines of questioning. Uh, Durant, I was going to sit down about this time. The battle of words. Depending on if uh, Perseus uh, is with her, um, we would also potentially see them together in person. I see. I'm only keeping in mind as I kind of glance over my shoulder. We leave the seedier parts of town and they start to uh, not drink themselves to misremembering. Someone like me or our good <coughs> friend here, Durantar, stick out quite a bit. You as well, funny man. I, uh, I think that might be to our advantage. I've made a name for ourselves, myself, specifically by uh, hiding in plain sight. I think maybe that depends on whether or not you want to be remembered from the Gala Knight. You could go in with uh, an established rapport, but walk out with a tarnished reputation that might follow you around. This is an archmage, after all. Well, 
I would be able to walk into the gala, cause a distraction without anyone knowing I had caused it, and it would be quite the distraction. If our VIPs fled together and or made their way any other which direction, we could still track them what without is myself being with. You keep speaking of. I could very easily make believe all of the patrons believe that there was something of danger, even so much as per se a dragon head peering in through a window or the screams of so many thousands outside that it'd be enough to draw enough attention to where there would be panic. We could use it to our advantage. I think the question remains, do we want panic though? If we cause a panic and there are six of us, five of us sneaking in that aren't panicking, it's the same as walking in as we are. Well, I feel like it's better than crashing in through the ceiling without any plan at the gala all. The gala and the Black Manor are two completely two different, different locations. Things. Why and would you... we need to go to the gala in the first place if we don't find what we look for in our house? So I think, I, allow me to make my case here. I think at the gala, we present ourselves potentially early in the night in a way that is not hidden. Right? We want people to see us. We want to be visible at the gala so that should potential other things happen in the night, when we return to the gala later, we have been there the whole time. I mean, three of us are very ostentatious in our presentation. Very, uh, we stick out just a little bit. I'm very well aware of this myself, Luxodon. I imagine you too uh, have never had a day in which someone has not stared at you. What are you talking about? I fit in with everyone else. No, uh, of course you do. Direction. <clears throat> Trust me, they don't. Uh, they're taking notice of your, your <laughs> form. What are you as talking you, about? I am a normal humanoid. As you do that, the room goes silent for a second, and you guys look, and like every table around you is staring at you. Yeah, just like that. It's, <laughs> when we Pardon. were walking down the street, it's much the same. Can You'll you make a good point. Me. I've only been around humans most of my life. No, I've... you make a you make a very good point, and I almost wonder if we can use that to our extreme advantage. I'm loath to suggest that we should split up, but perhaps some of us, especially me, because I cannot sneak in any manner, so I would do no good in her household. Maybe I, we all make an appearance at the gala. Some of the less uh, unique of us. Especially you, ma'am, who can change at any time. Sneak away, accomplish the job, and we just say, oh, our friends are off in another quadrant of the gala or somewhere else. We run distraction at the gala while giving everyone in the party an alibi. Our other, another uh, option, I can impersonate someone of high standing. Uh, Luxodon would be great bodyguards, no. Um, potentially. Potentially. If we needed to sneak him in through the front door, that would be a good way to do it. Well, I'm not sure the Gallo would... If we were perhaps both your bodyguards, they wouldn't refuse us of our weapons. Or refuse... Even better. Or if it was doing to our and I. I mean, I am also... A... I would have to be pretty high standing, though, to uh, pull off a two-bodyguard... Uh. That might be too much attention. People might start asking questions. And and we also run the risk of that person being somewhere else in the room. <laughs> of course. That would be extremely awkward. Wouldn't it be fun? Well, I would just take them over to the ocean and drop them in and they would never come back up. Um, Easy peasy. Yeah. Uh, Let's do some scouting tomorrow, see what's what, and come up with a game plan. All this is just talk. Genera, because of your travels throughout the world, uh, and Jax, because of your vicinity to uh, to this nation, uh, both of you just make uh, general intelligence checks. <coughs> as you guys are talking about who should impersonate. Intelligence check. <coughs> Uh, 
Let's go. Natural one, baby. Um, Do I include my jack of all trades? Go for it. Oh, that's out of the box. Oh, but it was good. No. Uh, 16. Uh, a 16, okay. Uh, so through, through your travels and through the people you've met, especially those uh, being a satyr and because of your close proximity from uh, your homeland of, uh, of the gardens and the Feywild, you have uh, a bit of some ties to uh, some druidic people, and one of which you have met through your travels, known uh, as, why is the name escaping me, uh, Shaval, the leader of the Naku Circle. You would know that she is uh, a high-ranking druid, one of which uh, you have met, and with some roles could describe in a manner that might give Elle the ability to impersonate her. And it would not be unheard of for someone of such a standard to have guards with her. And with it being, with her being from the Zartalas Empire, it's close enough that you could reason that she would be, she could possibly have been invited, but not be there. Well, uh, <clears throat> friends, I do think if we would like to go with Kel's idea of um, hiding in plain sight through some nobility, I do have a particular individual in mind who might work. Are they at least cute? Hmm. Hmm. I don't think I've ever seen someone that I don't think is attractive. So, like you know, you, thank you. Well, I'm certainly willing to impersonate. That's what I do. I would like to do a tiny bit of shopping, especially if I'm going to need a gown to uh, or suit. I think potentially something in the middle. Something in the middle. Um, I think maybe some armor to wear under it to make me a little... Draw a little less attention, sound-wise. I'm trying Other to than think that, of a scenario where you could excuse yourself and perhaps... Uh, oh, geez, sorry, names. Uh... Druntar or I stay behind and explain your temporary absence while you perform your other duties at the Black Manor. Right. What is the uh, phrase you humans like? And then the snout would come up and it'd... Yeah, it's powdering. Uh, powdering nose. one's nose, yes. Yeah, that's what it is. This would be a bit more involved. We'd have to explain a temporary sickness, perhaps. So, something that is not unseen at a gala. <clears throat> I mean, she is this Who individual. Who is this is a, person you would be impersonating? Uh, their name is Cheval. They are a high-ranking high ranking member of... I'm sorry, I completely blanked on where uh, they're the from. The Naku Circle. The Naku Circle. They are a uh, individual of druidic standing. I, uh, <clears throat> I imagine it might not be uncommon for... <sighs> potentially their stature and or uh, nature itself to kind of commune with them in a, in a manner that might excuse them for a, a small period of time. Yes, we could always hang beside doors and say that we're waiting for their return. I can make that work. Damn, you curious did. question. Yep. Between Udatir and Eldatir, and because they're both nature-based goddesses and a god, would I have any idea about the Naku Circle and or the person in question. Uh, like a like history check. Well, I'm All very right, well, intelligent. Let's do, let's do let's do religion. Make a religion check. Well, if you'll accept the same dice roll before you repeated yourself, it's a sixteen plus uh, religion. Yeah. Minus one, fifteen. <laughs> a cleric I thought I was with trained a minus in religion. In religion. <laughs> I thought I was trained in it, but it is intelligence. Religion oh. is. So, either way, uh, with a 15, so you would know that Asnathaeus, Udatir, and Eldatir are the three uh, most recognized druidic uh, goddesses being uh, nature-based. So you would have some knowledge uh, about the Naku Circle and some of their, maybe some of their practices and some of their, uh, some of their ways, but uh, I wouldn't say you're too, uh, too in tune with uh, their druidic ways. 
Oh, understood. Could have sworn I built my character to be proficient in religion, but I suppose I didn't. Yeah, I would have thought. What's happening? Noise changes. Ah, it's okay. I'm letting it go for now. It's not important. Um, well, that... I believe, yeah, we could work with that at least. That's that's the start of an introduction on a gala that then gives uh, the lot of us a bit of a scapegoat or an alibi for the night. That is true. I would, however, recommend... I know you two were debating staying behind, but uh, <clears throat> I think traveling with your charge may be a little more or a little less suspicious and uh, I'll be quite frank and honest <clears throat> if things go south I, I would quite enjoy uh, two of our most heavily armored individuals to be next to me that is a fine point I Have you considered something as the band I am the band <laughs> <laughs> This actually presents... You're not wrong. I I was only speaking from what we know when we haven't even scouted. We've got a long day ahead of us tomorrow. <coughs> Perhaps we scout, see what's what, and reassess. But that is a basis to begin. Maybe. Potentially. DM, do we still have time to shop? Uh, Tonight, it's closed. Uh, okay, morning. Uh, so the... We know that this tavern can... From what uh, Generous told you, you buy general things uh, here, you know, uh, maybe a traveling gear, basically, rations, uh, maybe some health potions, uh, things of that nature, but probably not uh, too big of a selection. Probably not. Probably not a ball gown is what you're telling me. <laughs> probably not. Uh, when, with her mention of looking for a dress, uh, Genera, you would know, and Jax, you would also try from your time spent in the city that there is a place within the Cobalt District known as Time to Die, UIE. -I -E. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, which is a uh, clothing and a leather workers uh, shop. <clears throat> well, uh, I think we uh, <clears throat> reconvene in the morning. However, before we do, uh, Theramore, I, I've heard tales of your respute as a tinkerer. Um, you've been awfully quiet. One of your intelligence must have thoughts on our <clears throat> potential plans for tomorrow. I would just like to see where uh, we will be. I can't tinker, as you say, anything if I don't know what it's going to be used for. don't want to go in blind. True enough. Just have to see you tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> DM, I'll go up to the barkeep, whatever she has a moment, and I'll buy us uh, all a room for the night. Uh, so as you as you walk up and you noticed, uh, as you guys have been talking, you've noticed that some of the parties it's gotten a little bit quieter. There's still people that are celebrating, but a, a lot of the people that are probably you could consider a little more responsible uh have gone home for the night and are not uh are not here still causing a ruckus so she's gotten a little bit more of the room up. she's gotten herself exposed but she doesn't look nearly as flustered as when you uh as you approach uh she says uh uh thank you so much or at least thank your friend for cleaning up those tables for me no don't worry i'll uh <clears throat> i'll pass along the thanks to my uh larger compatriot. Uh, could we get six rooms for the night, if you do not mind? Sure, that, that could be arranged. Would you guys, uh, like, large rooms, single beds? We do have some larger rooms if anyone would like to come together, but, uh, we do have singles as well. How about the, uh, can we get five of the, <clears throat> the regular sized room and one of the larger ones? Act, wait, hold on. Actually, can I get five of the larger ones if you have them in one regular one? Yes, that could be arranged. Absolutely, and I will fork over whatever gold she asks for. Uh, well, with uh, with five large rooms, uh, one small room. Well, call it two gold pieces. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much. Which uh, which key is the small room? Might I ask? Uh, well, just one second. She'll kind of reach under under the desk for a second. And start, start gathering the keys and she'll set them all out. Uh, this one is uh, for the this. Okay. <clears throat> I will I will thank her. I'll slide her another gold for her kindness, and I will. Uh, thank you so much. Don't mention it. And I'll turn around and I'll walk back to the table and I will take the small room key and I'll hand it to Druintar and I'll say, uh, here's all the keys and I'll start passing them out to everyone. You piece of shit. I fucking knew it. I'll take the key and say, oh, I sleep outside. Well, if you'd like, they have a, they have a nice cozy bed for you. I asked specifically and I don't think they have anything that would be quite your size. So if you'd like to... Um, you might be a little more cozy out there, but I think everything was just kind of like small person rooms, you know? <laughs> so sorry. But you have a room if you would like it. There are amenities in there, I oh, imagine. Hold on. I'm you, body shaming. You, you sleep neither under the cover of roof nor the cover of the waves. Well, this armor is actually custom to me, and at the same time, Hay is actually one of the very few things that doesn't break under my weight if it's thick enough. Most beds are not accustomed to a 400 pound body. I think you're going to find it quite difficult to sleep in uh, a city of this, uh, well, especially in this district where they seem to patrol have fun sleeping next to most alleyway. most leave a 400 pound elephant lie hmm. you can sleep well, on the floor of your room <laughs> you know what's the average temperature outside DM Oh, at this time of the year, it is uh, mid-fall, right? so going into the this late night, it would be uh, it'd be a, a little cooler, so you're thinking probably high 40s. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, friend, uh, if you come I... down with something, just know uh, <clears throat> I'm probably not going to help you. So, uh, you're on your own at that point. I have offered my room. You may take it if you like. <clears throat> I've been on my own for almost a hundred years, friend. Thanks for the consideration. I Enjoy your night. Two, I love how the two like players you got a two Florida room party fucking suite. cringed when he said 40. <laughs> the two players from Florida cringed. Nobody else did. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. I didn't even realize. <laughs> You guys are both like, oh, you like visibly recoiled when he said 40. <laughs> it was 83 today. Yeah, yeah fuck you. So you said this bar has like general items, right? Correct. I I'd like to ask the the barkeep if she's got any metal hooks. Uh, what, yeah, metal. What size? What? I mean, uh, uh, the... pretty large. Like I'm looking to make a grappling hook. I, I mean, we have actual grapples. We could. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Okay, sure. I then you were trying to make a oh, meat locker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I also was like, what the fuck? My mind went immediately like body freezer. <laughs> no, no. I know. I, well, uh, I mean, for, for just a mere grapple with 50 foot of hemp and rope, uh, five silver pieces? Cool, I'll get two of them. <laughs> I'll take two. So she'll, she'll go back to the storeroom, and after a few minutes, she comes back with grapples and 100 foot of hemp and rope uh, separated into 50 foot seconds. Do these hooks still have bodies on them? Not yet. <laughs> but, but there is one that looks a little bloodstained. Oh. Worn in. <clears throat> uh, I will retire for the night to my. Same. Spacious double room. <laughs> so, uh, Out of curiosity, Durantaw's gonna wander upstairs and open the door and take a peek, looking, and be like, mm, "So, go back uh, outside." Yeah, Durantaw, as you open up, 
you see uh, a small twin bed uh, that's kind of pushed off into the corner with uh, a small table and a, and a little oil lamp that's si sitting there. It looks like it's a... If you were to lay lengthwise, you base that's like the, the width of your room, basically. It's uh, extremely small. Uh, for the rest of you, as you walk into your uh, luxurious larger rooms... Uh, I see you. You find a uh, king-size bed with uh, luxurious silken uh, <laughs> uh, bed sheets, and you find a large uh, bronze and copper uh, bathtub off in the side, which has a small little note that reads on it that you can uh, ring for hot water, and they will bring it up to you at any time. You will also find a large table, uh, large enough to seat four people, where you could have maybe a small gathering if you had found. And each room uh, has its own doorway that leads out to the terrace balcony that overlooks from the uh, <laughs> top of the rose room here. Stop, he's dead already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that lantern on the side table is like the size of his... It's like the size of a lighter for him. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> he's dead already, Matt. <laughs> You have to describe your room so you know where you're sleeping. Damn. All but one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see him from my terrace? Uh, oh, ho, ho, ho. You, okay. His room would be on the first floor, so downstairs, if he is outside, you would be <laughs> able to see him. She's the hay pile outside that I'll be sleeping on. Yeah, does she see a, a small, present from her balcony? There's a small set of stables where people uh, kind of keep their horses uh, just to the right of the rose room. And as you look down, you see uh, Durantar, like, spreading out some hay to lay within the stables. <laughs> I'll throw him down a pillow. <laughs> Can I see him from my balcony as well? Are we all on the same you guys wing? We're all on the same balcony. It all leads out to the same balcony. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna look into my spells real quick. <laughs> hey, my after, the, after the after the first pillow, I'm gonna cast invisible on myself. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting really sick of these new people. I'm not really sure if I like them. You know. <laughs> I tried to help. <laughs> I am literally seeing stars from laughing. Uh, Jax, I will, I will remind you, even though they have offered you a room, or paid for a room for you, that you do have your own quarters or your own place that you can stay within the uh, Tranquil Athenaeum, which is uh, also houses as the main headquarters for the Order of the Bronze Salamander, for whatever reason, if you should ever need to go there. Okay, uh, how far is that from here? Like, is that another district? Yeah, uh, it is within the uh, the Sapphire District, uh, so it would be, uh, I don't know, like a 30-minute walk. But, I mean, you being a monk, you could probably literally run across the rooftops and be there in 10 minutes. Fair. No, yeah, no, it's okay. I, I, I'm going to stay here, but no, I'm just going to write that down. How nice is that room? Uh, it's... The room you're staying in is nicer. Uh, so, your, your, your quarters are basically where you live back are basically... Uh, it's basically like a monk's compound. Everything's basically the, the bare minimum, except for, like, the areas that have to deal with, like, study and uh, where you could find, like, history books or uh, tomes about different things. That area is very luxurious and very nice, but that's mostly because uh, that's one of the main things that Lord of the Bronze Salamanders values above all other things, which is why their main headquarters is here within the Tranquil Athens. Gotcha. <clears throat> so, is there anything you guys would like to do before today doing your long rest? For <clears throat> um, I would like to scratch my butt with my trunk. <laughs> Sure, easy enough. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, each of you find your way into your large, luxurious, very comfortable beds. You guys find yourself uh, all getting a, a decent night's rest. Uh, it takes a couple, some of you maybe a little bit longer to fall asleep as the partying downstairs uh, is still going a little, maybe, maybe not as loud as it was when you first arrived, but it does calm down after a while, and you guys do find your way to sleep. Uh, morning comes, and you can hear... I would like to 
Oh, I would like to say that in the morning, um, I would like to spend an hour uh, crafting my uh, special co coke treats. Okay, go for it. Uh, for for some of you, uh, I I did not mention this, and this is my fault. Uh, Perseus, the items that he gave to each of you, some of them have special requirements for attunement, and you could do those during your long rest. Oh, of yeah, I meant to do that at night. I meant to mention that. I and will do that with time time Mine just takes twenty four hours, and then I'm good, right? Uh, yeah. Uh. I'll probably, so we, we probably won't cut it down right to the 24 hours, but you're, you can pretty much say you're attuned to it. Sounds good. Thank you. So I remember I caught the what you said, but I couldn't find it on D and D Beyond. So uh, what was just listed as the goddess ring, and then in parentheses it says Zarina. I mean, I did see the requirement for my individual item, which is just channeling magic. I don't know if you wanted to RP that or no. I you don't have to. I just wanted it. to say, you know, that way yeah. everybody knows. That they did it. I would have taken. I I thought it would 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 have been assumed that I would have taken the time to it, to it. It was, but in case someone said they didn't want to, then I knew. Understood. Uh, I think the only persons or the only two people's items that don't require attunement are uh, Daenerys and Theramores. And that is because you guys have uh, different items coming, but they were too strong to give you. A <laughs> <laughs> I love mine. Mine's great. You like my short story I wrote with it? Sure. If you want, I'll take it. Uh, I was just saying, I didn't know if you read it or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, I read it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, morning comes. Uh, you awake uh, well rested. Uh, Duratar, or Dur God damn, I'm going to have the worst time saying that. Duratan, or uh, Wait, awake uh, a little bit earlier than everyone else as the sunrise kind of crests over the uh, the ocean to rest or er, getting confused with campaigns. Uh, but as it crests over the walls and you guys are uh, awake in here, and it's a quiet day. Pretty much the only people that are out you see are guards patrolling the streets. Uh, none of them seem to pay mind or really even notice you. Uh, you don't get the sense they probably are walking through and checking the stables nightly. Crime within this area is at a minimum because of the uh, the pacifist sense that the Brawlhall and Concord carries. Uh, most people that come here feel as if they're safe, so the guards don't uh, necessarily patrol every inch. Which is why you guys are able to make your way through and why the uh, you guys would know the collection's um, main hub for the city is within... Uh, the Ye Old Winch, because the guards kind of stay away from that area and it gives them the ability to kind of work through the ship. But the rest of you do awaken. Uh, I assume come down for breakfast, unless there's something someone... Nope. Breakfast sounds good. Uh, one thing, uh, Drell, I will remind you, is at the start of every day, you can change your, uh, your proficiency thing you took for uh, the Titans class. Uh... So I saw you put it in Wisdom Saving Throws, I believe. Uh, so if you want to change that, you can. You can change it daily at dawn. I did not even know that, so... Oh, you're good. Are you talking about feet, or are you talking about something else? No, so let me pull up. Where's my... Where's my... Basically, uh, at dawn every day, you can pray to your god or goddess, and it allows you to gain proficiency in one thing of your choosing, whether it be a saving throw or a skill for that day. And every day at dawn, it resets, and you can choose a new one or the same one. <clears throat> and this isn't, this is me just questioning, I'm just kind of curious. I thought. Um, he got proficiency in wisdom saves. Is that a separate save he can gain proficiency so in, or he he has proficiency in wisdom saves. He can double it by taking wisdom saves again if he'd like. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, the divine commune. Yep. Okay. Uh, the other thing is your divine gift. Uh, it does take you some time. I don't remember ten minutes, but uh, you can choose if you read that to grant one of your fellow uh party members the ability to cast a spell from your spell list. That expends your spell slot. Right. Uh, much like how, how deities uh, give clerics their abilities, you have this, in a lesser sense, the ability to do the same thing. Okay, well, I'm not going to change anything for now, just because yeah, no, I'm I just, okay with it. But yeah, just wanted to, to remind Thanks for the reminder, because, yeah, that was not... So basically, like, 
I, uh, the reason I wanted to remind you is in case you wanted to change it to stealth for the day. <laughs> <sighs> All right, yeah, I'm gonna change it to proficiency and skill stealth. <laughs> and don't don't do it just because I mentioned it. I just nope, wanted to know, I'm wanted doing to know it. that you had it. No, I'm doing it. <clears throat> so as Look. you guys all gather here in the bottom of the Rose Room, you see uh, a, some of the same familiar patrons from the last night. Uh, one familiar group, uh, a group of uh, two little halflings off in the corner, just kind of giggling, and it seems as if they've never stopped drinking since last night. Their faces are just flushed, and they're just tables littered in tankards, and they're just pounding back drinks. Basically, as you guys all walk in, uh, and they look around, and they basically look over and see the satyr, and they're like, ha, 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 that man's got horns! <laughs> that I do. That I do. They basically just go back to keep pounding their drinks, and you look over, and you see the uh, exhausted look of uh, the barkeep, as it seems she probably didn't get a break all night because these people never left. <clears throat> That's rough. Yeah. <clears throat> but as she oh, sees you guys come down, and I assume you guys all meet at a table, she'll uh, come over. Uh, good morning. Uh, what would you guys like for breakfast? So, as I wander in through the front door and see all this, how big are these individuals? The how many of them are there? Yeah, there there like, are two I... halflings, both at about like three foot five inches. Looks as how much they're... roughly do they weigh? Looks as if they're twins. Uh, looking at them and guessing, maybe uh, I don't know. Halfling normally weighs, but let's, let's they're say... about a foot shorter than Jacks. <laughs> <laughs> let's say <laughs> let's say they weigh uh, 125 pounds apiece. There's some hefty halflings. Whole lot. <laughs> what it says, like, I'm five they, some, I they, one, get, they don't have beer guts. Well they have beer beer God damn. Those are some heavy kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not going to do what I was thinking about, but I'm also going to notice the situation and start picking up glasses five at a time again and bringing them back to the well, bar. Most of the room is cleared. It's just this one table that's just. Right. I'm going to start picking on. them up. Okay. And then you see them walk over and both of them just go. <sighs> Huge. <laughs> You're tiny. Clink, 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 clink. They both just go back to pounding their drink. Uh, so, so we've got a long day ahead of us. We do. We, be scouting. we should scout first so we can make a plan on what we need to purchase. Mm. Agreed. That sounds so, like the wisest course of action. Is access restricted into the Diamond District? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't believe so. I, I've had no problem just kind of waltzing in there. I would recommend <clears throat> we don't cause too much of a fuss while we're in there. I don't. I don't think that would be uh, <clears throat> appreciated. But uh, we, we should have no issue, kind of. Uh, covertly scouting around as long as we do not attempt to draw too much attention to ourselves. Yeah, we really need to fit in and then I'll brush some hay off of uh, uh, Trontar's shoulder. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> I imagine we would like to scout, we should probably scout the, uh, the Black Manor first and then potentially the Gala location. And uh, if we're feeling dicey, I, I, Perseus did mention some some sewer access. I don't I don't know exactly where we would find that, but I imagine a, a good look sewer around. Sewer access uh, to the banner. Yeah, sewer access that comes <clears throat> up through the uh, right. one. You would know that yeah. uh, as you guys pass through, you did see a uh, a well of sorts just outside the uh, the rose room. But as you were looking there, you noticed that people were dumping uh, basically like horse waste and other things down this well. So you get the sense it's probably just where they dump their stuff. <laughs> uh, so you could assume that is where you could find access to this. That's where they put their snacks. Would I, would I by chance know that um, these sewers uh, 
technically connect building to building like i can go inside of somebody else's building and go through their sewer uh correct so this system is actually built and ran by or was built by the order of the bronze salamanders as a way for people to move covertly throughout the city without being noticed so you would be uh you might not know it exactly but you would be familiar with with them uh as if you would need to, if you would need to get from one side of the city to the other without being seen, you could probably make it fairly easily. Did all of their robes start out white? <laughs> Gross. Uh, but you would know that this sewer system was uh, was built and designed by the Order of the Bronze Salamanders for this reason. But uh, it is uh, the only places it really connects to are. The openings, basically the wells throughout the city, the glass citadel, a small place uh, that is outside the city uh, where it all exits uh, near the, the shores of the Sapphire Basin, and then there is another entrance beneath the Tranquil Athenaeum. So basically, so, three ways in, three ways out. So it, it doesn't reach the manor? It does, so it does reach Black Manor. It reaches Black oh, okay. because so Black Manor is on the same grounds as the uh, the Glass Citadel. Oh, got it. Okay, so uh, I guess then, um, so just being uh, part of the order of the Salamander, would we not have some kind of access from our headquarters? Uh, your headquarters within the Tranquil Athenaeum so would have access. Oh, okay. Then I get you. All right. Uh, so not to uh to give too much away before we get there, just to skip. Uh, so you guys understand, uh, because two of you have uh, traveled the city and seen it, but you would know that uh, Black Manor and the Citadel are basically next door to each other, and when Percy has talked about the wine cellar, you could probably assume that it's the wine cellar for both buildings. Oh. Hmm. 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 <clears throat> well, friends, I think we stick with our plan. We continue a little bit of a <clears throat> scout and potentially using the sewers to try to uh, find our way around a little bit. <clears throat> what do you say? But you want to you want to check the sewers out, or do you want to scout the house? The man I think I think a little of little of a little of B. Um, if we're going to be using these potentially tonight for. Uh, covert entry into these locations. I would like to at least know what we're dealing with down there. I don't want it to all be a surprise. You, you feel? Want to up? Yeah. I, I feel like the sewers are relatively safe. Whereas if we have six people standing outside of some rich person's banner, they might question us. I do have a question. Is there such thing as like a sleep potion? <clears throat> ask me. Like something to knock them out for a couple of hours. But l hear me out, hear me out. She wants the laser drugs. What <laughs> I'm saying is we know where they're getting their wine for the party. If everybody in the whole city passes out at the same if time... everybody in... That's going to be bad the news. The whole party that could recognize us is asleep, then we have no problem breaking into the manor. Well, I, I would imagine there's separate guards in the manor not drinking. Because the manor and the party are yeah, separate. but then that's two people we have to take care of. Two? Potentially. You know what I'm saying. I, I'm just throwing out I, ideas. I appreciate it. I still think doing this with as little undisturbed, a little disturbance as possible, leaving as many people what's kind of to map? their mouth. What's a little, what's a hundred of the highest nobles in the city suddenly passing out at once? Yeah, in a sewer, mm -hmm. or, or from a wine cellar with a sewer that apparently has... Riffraff running in and out all the time. They couldn't prove it was us. That's all I'm saying. I don't, they don't need to prove it's us. They just need suspicion. You want to knock out an archmage at her own party. I want to knock them all mm -hmm. out is what I'm saying. It's just an idea. If you purchase the sleep potion, you can do it yourself. And if it goes south, I will turn you in myself. <laughs> I am, not going, down. I am not going down. I am not going down for you to knock story. out an arc base. Just an idea. I don't hear any just, other creative thoughts. I will from travel the We have discussed many creative thoughts. I will travel the country for years singing the tale of you in jail. 
be a good one. I'd make it. a little accident. Yeah. Just mm. an idea. Chamber pots would be overflowing. <laughs> oh, and we'll be it's in the sewer. Let's, uh. let's let's go see where we're gonna go first before we uh do any poisonings. I yeah, no, let's do poisoning. Let's do a drive by at the Black Manor. But without okay. the shooting. Should we just go as a gang? <laughs> drive by? What is the meaning of this phrase? I think we should go scout out the Black Manor. Let us <clears throat> let us finish our breakfasts and uh Hurry forward. What I'm class are you, uh, Kel? Quell? Kel? I'm a paladin. Okay. And what are you, uh, Theramore? Artificer. Thank you. <laughs> so, you guys, after, uh, eating your deliciously, uh, prepared poached owlbear eggs, uh, and the a bit of uh, forest bacon that they have let set out for you. This you guys, make your way out, and the city is yours. <clears throat> On to the Diamond District. Yep, to the Diamond District. You guys start passing through the uh, the different cobblestone paths of this, and looking through, you see all of the uh, you see all the different. Uh, Houses made of this crystalline glass and various things. <laughs> God damn it! I hate that. Uh, and as you do, you come to the outer wall of the Diamond District. You see this large, uh, about ten foot tall uh, stone wall that kind of encompasses encompasses the district with a large crystalline uh, gate that has been pulled up in front of it. And you see a handful of guards standing out front, but it doesn't seem like they're pat there. Or as if they're just keeping watch and tabs on who's coming and going, not as if they're stopping anyone. So, in. Yep, continue in, head towards the Black Manor. Act like I got some kind of purpose. Sure. Uh, you guys make your way through through the gate and even further further down the road. As you guys pass through the gate, then he turns from crowded houses to almost open fields. The people that live here, you can see their homes, they have, they've got some acreage. You can see the almost rolling hills with spread out trees. Uh, you can see beautifully trimmed uh, hedges and different sets of uh, flowers and scenery that's all been prepared. And the city turns from a, a crowded city setting to almost uh, a hillside village where it's just these beautiful massive homes and these rolling hills and this massive beautiful scenery. And off in the distance, at the very end of it, sitting on the uh, banks of the Sapphire Basin, you can see the uh, large gl uh, glass citadel. And to the side of it, you see a small compound that is built within the same walls as the citadel. So what you guys see is a large uh, three-story uh, mansion built of gorgeous ebony wood. With the front of the house, there are a number of windows on the second floor with and the first floor. But on the third floor, you see... Just one giant pane of windows going all the way around the top of the, the top of the building with that large glass dome that's kind of over the top, which you would know this Perseus described as her observatory. Uh, looking at through, you see these large uh, ebony wood pillars that kind of tower and lead up to the uh, ceiling of this or the roof of this massive house. And you can see these black or these vines of these roses growing up the sides of these pillars that have black roses on them. On either side of the building, you see two towers in which you notice three individuals sitting, and all throughout the grounds, you can see multiple guards patrolling. So how far are we from the banner about? Uh, you're looking, basically looking at what you can see from the road. Out, basically, you're basically, I assume you guys are looking inside the gate as you walk by, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just want to so check it out. It's probably about 200 feet from the gate. Uh, how big is this manor? Is it mo how, a two, three story? Three or, story mansion. Um, okay. That is no man's land. You said there is that glass, the glass dome on top, correct? Correct. Uh, how many windows? The third floor is one single pane window that goes all the way around, and then there are uh, various sets of windows. Uh, the second floor has four on the front facing, and two uh, bay windows on each side of the. 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Are there any windows on the well? Never mind. That's fair. <clears throat> and so, like, we're we're as close as we can get right now with you know beyond jumping over a gate, of course. Correct. Hmm. There is, you guys could walk around the sides of the grounds and try to see if there is uh, a way, a place you could scale the wall uh, to maybe get a better look. There are the two guard towers that are sit on the outside of either side of the wall, uh, but they do, from what you guys can tell, appear to be man. <clears throat> I would suggest we stay to the street for now. Yeah. <clears throat> At least in a, while the sun is high. Uh, yeah. Jim, what is the um, <clears throat> location where the gala is? What's that look like in comparison to the Black Manor? So just off in the distance, uh, maybe uh, not even 100 feet from, from Black Manor, is the steps that lead up into Glass Citadel. So you see this massive citadel that is made of this crystalline substance. It looks to be the same as the five large jade-like towers that kind of tower over uh, each corner of the city. The city is kind of built in a... a shape and uh but it seems these are more uh more well crafted more finely carved and built to make this massive citadel uh is there a heavy guard presence around the citadel as well uh in front of the citadel there are uh two guards at the bottom of the steps the steps are ones that are kind of start wide and kind of get thinner as they as they go up and at the bottom at the bottom there's two sets of guards on either side so four guards at the bottom with uh, two sets of guards on either either side at the top in front of the front gate. And it was your... Make a perception check for me. Just looking it over. Oh, God. Where's my perception? Please, Dad. Uh, 26. Hey. <laughs> uh... So with a very keen eye, you're kind of looking over over the building, and you do catch sight of people that are kind of lurking in the shadows at different vantage points all over the citadel. Some with stabs, some with bows. Could assume to be maybe mages or snipers and archers, all placed strategically where they are maybe a little less out of view uh, to kind of watch different vantage points entry into the citadel. Hmm. Okay. After watching this, and I imagine <clears throat> kind of taking our time walking by, <clears throat> I will lead them away so that we can talk freely. Assuming no one has anything else they want to look for. Sorry. I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I think grappling would be too risky. We just Everyone's <clears throat> probably watching. I don't know if you all saw, but it appears they have some... Um, additional support hidden in the shadows around the citadel i do not know if it, uh, it would be wise to walk so uh, ostentatiously into the front door to cause a scene even without the backup in the shadows that's way too heavily defended that is a heavy guard presence As much as I may question his motives, I do think Perseus may have been right about the sewers. It's seeming that way, yeah. Well, doesn't our friend over here have the ability to turn himself invisible? Yes, but I was hoping to avoid sewers. I can only wander so far invisible for me to look inside and gleam whether or not there's a sword or not and make it out is unlikely. <clears throat> if we're going to the gala, would we not be walking in the front door in the first place? We don't need to sneak past if we're planning on showing up. Yes, but as far as handling both the Black Manor and the gala, it's the same seller. <clears throat> if we were going uh, with backup dress-up costumes... It would be easiest to just enter in through the sewer and then change into if need to be. That was once my... We're done, once we're done with the Black Manor, that is. That was my thought as well, is potentially 
here from the sewer, scout out the Black Manor as stealthily as possible, and then, uh, when the time is right, make our appearance is known at the gala to save face, present an alibi. Agreed. I don't know how many faces we can save of mine. If I'm seen in one spot, I'll be recognized in the other, I'm sure. Well, then we'll simply have to make sure they do not see you in the Black Manor. Yeah, besides, you walking around invisible doesn't do a whole lot if every floorboard you step on is bowing like the bow of a ship. <laughs> it's not my problem. It's a small earthquake every time you take a step. Careful around fine china on shelves. <laughs> well... What do we think? Do we need to pick up anything extra? <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't know. Oh, what... I would imagine we're all going to meet. I would say at least some fine clothing if we're going to establish a gala presence. How, DM, how fine are my robes that I got? Uh, you would know that your, your Inquisitor's robes would be an acceptable garb for any form of party or uh, formal event, at least within this city. Okay. Hmm. Well, and I think it's decided. I think we need, at it, 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 the bare minimum, we're going to all need a, a, a gala presence, a an outfit that we could conceivably wear in addition to um, maybe any magical means that we can pick up around some stores I know here to uh, assist us in our endeavors. Well, I did beseech Uditir this morning, and I picked up a couple of uh, a couple of magical spells that hopefully will help us in such an, something as dangerous <clears throat> as the house of an archmage. Um. DM, is there any reason why my heavy armor can't be conceived as, you know, bodyguard's armor? Uh, from your knowledge, you could say it's probably, uh, I mean, the answer is yes. Okay. I think getting people to believe it is going to be a different story, though. <laughs> but that's kind of what I was getting at. Hmm. Okay, well. I don't know uh, how many tailors there are in this city, but I need to find one to make me some robes. Yeah, we'll need a couple of tailors for you. Lucky for you, my friends, I know uh, just the place to be. And uh, not only they have exquisite taste in their silks and their fine, uh, their fine linens, but uh, I've heard they're quick, which is... Uh, for all intents and purposes today, the thing that we are most interested More in. More important, yes. Yeah, I think we could skip on the quality uh, or potentially the, uh, you know, haggle some prices, but we, we definitely need these now. Uh, and I think the more time we hesitate with debating and talking plans, the less time we have to prepare uh, very expensive robes. And I will start leading them towards time to die. <laughs> Easy enough. Uh, you lead them out uh, of the gates of Diamond District and back through the winding different, uh, more clustered area of the uh, Amethyst District. And as you get to the Am through the Amethyst District, you pass through the mid -center, center of the city of the Rose District and make your way onto the eastern edge of town into the Cobalt District, where you, after a few minutes, find your way back through town and kind of looking at, oh, that way, kind of taking a moment to remember which way and where it was located. And you do find a small circular familiar building with a wooden sign that reads in dark, almost blood-like red letters, time to die. Ignore the ominous overtones. They are some of the finest tailors in the city. <clears throat> After looking at the sign for Almost ten seconds. My character go. Oh, like dying clothes. I understand. Elephants clearly do not forget, and I will walk in the building. 
<laughs> Easy enough. So, so you, you enter into this large uh, circular building where as you walk in, there is a the main level and then there's almost like a small recess level where you can see a small gnome woman uh, kind of working on her loom and weaving and weaving uh, what appears to be some clothes currently. And you uh, see her and she looks up. I'll be with you in one minute. And she starts just very quickly, her hands rapidly finishing her what she's doing. And then puts the piece and lays it out. What can I do for you guys? I need well fancy robes. Yes, you do. Uh, okay. Uh, if I could get them to match my shoulder plates, to, that'd be preferable. So run off and find find her, her ladder and come over and set it up and then get like a piece of what appears to be some sort of rope that she uses for measuring. Starts basically taking the measure for someone of your stature. Possible. Um, Sorry, if it's possible, can I say that uh, I would have changed into a similar likeness to one of the people that we knew would be in the party, or sure. is uh, that too late? Yeah, you can. Um, when she's measuring my inner seam of my thigh, I want to say, whoa, give me some distance on my trunk. <laughs> oh, I need to check all the measurements to make sure I get a nice fit for you. That fit will be fine. Well, if you say so, it might be a little baggy. <laughs> I think you could deal to tie that up. No problem. Oh. You are you are working with a titan, ma'am. Please. Well, anyway, uh, forgive my friend's crassness. I think all of us are going to need a little bit of a, a fancier garb. We have a, an event tonight. Well, the rest of you, I think, uh, might have things on hands. Uh, I believe he's the only one I might need to make something custom for. But feel free to peruse my wares and pick out anything that you think would be of your liking, and I will tailor it to your fit. Thank you, Kylie. I want something purple. <laughs> so, whatever you guys have in mind, he's gonna have, because this place is huge. Cool. Wonderful. I'll, I'll get something that matches what I have, but fancier. Something royal. Easy enough. So about, let's say, uh, 20, 30 minutes goes by as you guys basically look through everything and find what you're going to tell us. Oh, you guys have exquisite taste. Uh, with, well, let's see, with the clothes, sizing, and the custom order, uh, I could call it, uh, let's call it 50 gold pieces. Hey. I'll take care of it. I'll, I'll do, uh, 52. Well, thank you. Uh, You're very welcome. It's going to take me... I'm going to do it my as quick as I can with still keeping the quality high, but it's going to take me a couple hours to fashion something for your, your taller friend here. That's fine. We have some other, um business we should attend to in that time should have it done no at least by the end of morning thank you uh oh. forgive me for not asking in the beginning um but you seem to be a very well-established seamstress and i would hate to not know the name of such a an acquired artist oh did i not introduce myself my name is a uh, heredi heredi wonderful to meet you genera that uh, is nice Strange seeing someone of a fey folk here within Rahala. Although, in my old age, I think we may have met before. Oh, potentially. I've been here, I've been there, I've played some parties, you know. The name uh, sounds familiar. Well, thank you. It means that uh, I'm clearly doing my, my job. Well, uh, DM I... only as a point of description. I have selected and picked out um, <clears throat> a tall, a, a pair of uh, almost knee-high boots um, in these kind of almost baggy, but they kind of become uh, tailored pants that are obviously tucked into the boots. And overall, it's a it's a brown um, vestments with uh, black trim. And 
the, the more items that I end up donned, you can see that I'm putting together, going back to my old ways, uh, the garb of a sailor or a captain, perhaps. Okay. It's much more seafaring in appearance than, oh, I guess, sure. proper dress for a gala. Okay. Easy enough. Well, I should get started on uh, your guys' order then, because I, I do not want to keep you waiting. Uh, I assume you guys will be attending the party tonight. There's been quite a few people coming to close today. Wonderful. Sounds like uh, good business. I'm sorry to add so much fabric to your order. Oh, by all means. Uh, do not give it any bother. Uh, I want to be honest, I'm a little excited. I have not made something for this big before. Just make sure that it inspires a oo-woo amongst the other members of the party. Not sure what that means, but I'll do my best. <clears throat> Put some tentacles on it. <laughs> Peretta, you'll uh He meant yeah. trunks, not tentacles. He doesn't know <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if we could disregard the last 30 seconds of conversation, that'd be great. I would like to disregard them from my actual memory. <laughs> uh, you'll you'll have to excuse my asking, but I, I have heard rumor that you are one of the finer seamstresses in this town. Uh, and uh, through my travels the last two days in the Rose Room, and as I passed by the Marble Equinox, I did hear, as it tickled my ear, that you were making a... Uh, is it true that you may have been making a new robe for Chancellor Alturis, or is uh, or have my ears deceived me? Uh, make a persuasion check. A million. Ah, two on the dice, so ten, so twenty-one. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Uh, well, I am. Uh. I was going to uh, let her unveil it tonight, but I am working on uh, well, my masterpiece. It is a uh, very eloquent red dress. Mission me to make for her. That's absolutely fabulous. Well, I wish you the best of luck, and uh, it, I, I cannot wait to see, wait it? To see it. Are we allowed? I, I don't want to impose too much. Days between friends? Oh. <laughs> You know me, Pareto, we're always Plan friends. Plan a bomb. Uh, so she'll lead you into the back room where she has a mannequin-esque uh, statue back there. And laying on it is a... Uh, or sitting on it is this beautiful, long, flowing uh, red uh, red satin dress. Uh, almost got like a crimson uh, brightness to it that uh, comes down and then weaves out and is completely open in the back. Right, that is some of the finest seamstress. Uh, that is some of the finest craftsmanship I have seen in a long time. Kel, can you take a a look at that? Look at those little detailed end scenes right there. I'm sorry. What am I looking at? Just the Chancellor Alturas's dress. Okay. Okay. For tonight. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, Thank you. I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay. thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> I'll keep this between us. If, uh, I do appreciate you know. that. I, I wanted, I've been wanting to show it off, but he asked me to keep it to let her show off tonight. As long as no one else knows. Oh, don't worry. I think we'll be just as surprised as everyone else. I hope so. You guys all have fun tonight. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> what color was that dress? Red. Uh, like a crimson red. Got it. So with that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take our break because I just don't want that quick. Because uh, right. how long of a break, roughly? Good night, daughter. I don't know. I usually do like five minutes, and whenever everyone's back. Okay. Whatever, whatever everyone needs, basically. Bum, ba, dum, Four bum, hours. <laughs> Be back here in a minute. Woo! What was?
So, Aiden, how should I handle food for my chef's ability? <laughs> that was serious, huh? No, for real, man. This is gonna be great. What do you mean, how to handle it? Also, like, by so, the way, the stream can hear everything that you say during the break. So this will be funny. Well, that's okay. No, I gotta... Uh, so I need quote-unquote ingredients. So like, what am I looking for? Can I just like buy more ingredients? Well, that's, uh, that's a curious question. Do we have a uh, picture of wonder in the party? Because a wonder can scrounge up food for like six people. Wait, I have the ability to provide food for like, fuck yeah, create food and water third party. And I also have the ability to purify food and drink, so <clears throat> I can't help, I can create 45 pounds of food and 30 gallons of water on the ground, the contents of which range, enough to sustain up to 15 humanoids. So I'm sure that of these 45 pounds of food, I can make some seasoning, am I wrong? I mean... I would, I would imagine I can't, like, break it down to, like, you know, a gram of sage and a gram of oregano and a gram of this, but, like... I I can also just imagine a scenario where you literally just say, my backpack has various ingredients, and Matt will just be like, okay. Yeah, that's not completely well, I'm curious outrageous. if I can just, like, load up on uh, rations. Uh, bro, I added your ring for you. That's all that's you're supposed to yeah, I couldn't find it, but thanks, bud. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't add it for you. Did everyone else get theirs? Where is it? Uh, so, Aiden, uh, how long until Kaurik is, like, lusting after that thing? I mean, he doesn't know it exists, so... I know. <laughs> Alright, I don't see it. Maybe I can refresh and it'll be there. Here it is. I'll let you read Thanks, that man. Quick. Yeah, I, I really, I was doing my best, but I'll let you guys finish eating. Yeah, for a little bit longer. Go back. Yeah. So, uh, I was asking, or I was talking about it earlier. So, with my my chef's ability, in order yep. for me to use a lot of these actions, I need quote unquote ingredients. So, I was gonna ask, how do you want to handle that? Uh, I mean, if you, when you're at an inn, or a tavern, or even a general store, if you just want to buy, uh, say a bag of ingredients, and we'll say it has general chef's ingredients in it, like non-perishables, uh, we'll just, you know, we'll call it a gold amount, and that's how many. Sure, I can do that, that works. Does that include saffron, or no? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're out of context on that joke, man. I guess. <laughs> All right, hold on, Matt. I might need to ask you something. Give me a second. Just real quick, let me read something. Make sure it doesn't conflict. That was just Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm good. I have no questions. But I am really happy with something keeping to myself for a long time. That's all we ask. Alright, cool. I'm ready to go. <clears throat> As I've had my daily allotment of one palm full of sunflower seeds, I am sustained. <laughs> <laughs> Only one palm full? Wow, you have some real self-control, bud. <laughs> Everyone ready? Ain't easy, but it's necessary. Do you want me to turn off? Ready to roll. Do you want me to get your blanket? Haha, <laughs> ready to roll like dice? Haha. <laughs> you guys are the ones who wanted to play D D with me. I did not ask to play with you guys. Sorry. Right. My... Dream Deck's not playing my music. Uh oh. Can't play DD without music. Disgusting. So when do I get to fight the Chancellor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, fucking be careful what you ask for. Yeah, that's an Archmage, bro. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> do you have counter spell? Because I don't. I do. Yay. Yeah, Fucker. I'm um, tough. Guy. I can wish upon a star and maybe I'll get it. <laughs> when <laughs> it's all one. you need. 
<laughs> Lisa, I heard that one. <laughs> the ultimate counter spell. My persuasion rolls. <laughs> Madame, please do not cast the spell. No, but you gave me the idea, Lisa. I want to find me some sleeping powder and I want to infuse it with my darts. It wasn't a bad idea. Oh, well, I mean, in this Getting situation, half the gala to pass out. Like, but no, I'm in the future. Like, say a guard sees me, I can just like hit him in the face with a dart, a sleeping. I dart. will say that was more of a rogue move rather than a paladin. I don't know how like, many elves live in the Brahala Concord, but that gala would have been like everybody been fine, and the elves are just like, or the elves have been fine, and everybody else is just like. Pfft. <laughs> Listen, if we're not a sleeping potion, we're screwed. If we buy 60 pounds of pure melatonin and just dump it in the wines, that's not magical. That's just a regular concept. Who says baby. we can't go out into the wild and pick the fucking flowers and put them in the wine? Like, oh. It was a good fucking idea. Shut up. You just put a bunch of shrooms in them in their wine. Wow. The oh, forget. Whoa, whoa, bud. Shrimp and magic do not mix, all right? Stop. Why don't we just have the seven-foot-tall elephant walk in the front door and cast Fireball while we're at it? No, I said, don't have Fireball. I said A to D, and I said, I cast Fireball on the dress. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I guess boy. now she doesn't have a dress for the ball tonight. Oh, <laughs> that would be so fucking funny. It would be so bad, but that would have been hilarious. Then we have to figure out what is she going to do? She's not going to go to the ball, is she? I Maybe. think she'd still go. Yeah, just to uh, fair. <clears throat> I wish I had magic spell. Longer. I would have He didn't. In here. Okay. Oh, thank God. Oh, what did I not do? <laughs> so now we have a plan. The worst planning of your life. Okay. I'm ready <laughs> no, I it. think it's really good. I it involves know. burning an address. I guess I'll go it's ahead and unmute myself on fucking... Virtual audio cable is like shit. Deck right now. Like half half my half my buttons on my stream deck work, the other half don't. <clears throat> Anyways, let's jump back in. So you guys have just finished up at Time to Die. Uh, you have a couple hours before, uh, or we'll say within the break, an hour has gone by as you guys are perusing throughout town. Uh, so you have another hour before uh, your custom garb for uh, or Doom Tar. <clears throat> How's my dress fit? Uh, roll a d20 for me. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Just take a 10. Just again. take a 10. Safe. Just take a 10. Four. Four. Uh, it is really tight in the upper areas and really take loose it. in the lower areas. <clears throat> I'll take it. You're from Mermaid Cut. I got that. <laughs> Um, I'd like to, knowing that we have some time and some coin and might get into some trouble tonight, I'd like to lead everyone towards uh, probably the, the closest or the most well-known magic shop I would I would know of. Okay. Uh, you would know of a few. Uh, <clears throat> so you know that there is a alchemist shop within the Cobalt District known as the Boiling Cauldron. Uh, on the other hand, you would know that in the Sapphire District, there, is, there are uh, two places that come to mind for you. There are Zega's Runes, Vials, and more, and the Spellbound Tome. Wow. <clears throat> um, out of the three of them, which one is more likely? I, I imagine the Boiling Cauldron and the... The I forget the second one are going to sell a lot. Vegas runes, vials, and more. Yes, I imagine those are going to sell a lot of. I, I could get healing potions at either of those. Out of the three of them, um, which one would I? Would I know which one would be more likely to sell? Kind of um, just like magic items that we might be looking for, as uh, opposed to just kind of general stuff. It depends. Are you looking for magic items or magic weapons? Okay, so we're visiting both. That's fine. 
<clears throat> Let's start with Boiling Cauldron. Because that's... Um... Oh, no, sorry. I imagine we're closer to the Sapphire District. Let's go to Zega's rooms. Okay. So you make your way into the Sapphire District and into... Uh... After a few minutes, you do come across a, a large building that is built of masonry stone with two bay window, two bay windows on either side, with a large circular uh, door on the front that has a captain's wheel for opening uh, on it. Uh, it is built with uh, red wood and is very uh, ostentatious looking. Fantastic. This place looks a lot more exciting than I like to be. Because my iPad just died, so I need to... He was prepared. So you enter in, and you are within uh, Zega's Runes, Vials, and more. Uh, so when you come in, the smell of, like, incense and uh, different potions and strong sense of, like, uh, basically that smell you get when you go to a library. It, it is all, like, this compilation of these mixtures of spells as soon as you enter in. Uh, as you do enter in, you do find a small little circular circular table where you see Sega uh, sitting and kind of perusing through a book uh, as lists of different things on it. Can't really tell what they are from. It does look up. Good day. Can I help you guys? Looking for what kind of crazy stuff you got? Well, <clears throat> define crazy. Magical. I apologize. Well, I mean, I have an assortment of things. Uh, I, I have potions. I have uh, magical runes on spell scrolls. Uh, things of a varying nature. Really, if uh, if you tell me what you're looking for, I could perhaps point you in the right direction. Um, if I can, I'd like to show her my chainmail and say, "Can you, uh, by chance, make these a little quieter?" Uh. Enchanting's not really my forte, but uh, if you were to head over to Alden, who runs the Spellbound Tome, I hear he's very good. I'll I, keep that I, in. I would hate to point you to my competition, but I enter. I appreciate the honesty. Sega, then you wouldn't happen to sell kind of uh, armor of uh, elven make, would you? Oh, I do have some. Um, there. And she points over to uh, to the wall where you can see there is uh, a small, uh, or not small, a large uh, wardrobe of sorts. And as you open it, there's various different uh, chain mails uh, of different makes throughout it. Would you be open to a trade? <clears throat> uh, I would be open to give you, you a discount to trade. Sounds good. Good enough for me. Well, uh, or Elven, Mithril, and Steel, uh, I mean, uh, 300 gold pieces and you have a deal. I'll take it, thank you. <clears throat> Elven chain now, right? Thank Doesn't, you. Doesn't, uh, give you just... <laughs> I'm a little light on coin myself, but I am also interested in that, um... I think I have a I couple know. more. Uh, one, two, I got three. Well, it's up to you guys. I can always uh, <clears throat> doff this and go back to something uh, a little more simple, like leather. Uh, so what you want, dude? <clears throat> well, I... How much coin do you have, friend? Uh, 230. 230, okay. Uh... <clears throat> I'll step forward and I'll throw my hands in a wide gesture. Zega, <clears throat> it's been a while. Anyway, uh, we are, as you can see, we're here to spend a, a, a decent chunk of coin on some of your finer wares. Um, <clears throat> and I, I do not want to short sell you and your magnificent accomplishments. However, uh, me and my party were interested in uh, potentially if we could buy some of your more 
unique items uh, in bulk, would you be amiable to perhaps give us a little bit of a, a discount on the price of each individual item? If it helps, uh, ma'am, I um, I only require the the under bits. I don't require the the on the top of the armor. I think she'd prefer to keep my symbology on me, and so it would be a, a trade of sorts. He needs some steel banning. Uh, Twenty-four. I deeply desire steel bands. Uh, <laughs> well, why I don't necessarily you remember, it, well, I don't me. get very many customers. Uh, I'm sure a deal could be struck if uh, we reach a uh, you. I'm interested. Uh, look, <clears throat> is there anything else you guys need, or just the two? Wouldn't have any kind of uh, sleeping con concoction by any way. Uh, I mean, uh, let me. Uh, that blue potion there on the wall, if you could grab it for me. Sure. Uh, so I'll reach up and grab a, a blue potion off of the wall. Uh. <laughs> and uh, looking it over, uh, I believe this would do what you needed to do. Well, so what my idea was is I. Out of character, I, I'd like to try and infuse it, infuse it with my darts. Would you allow that? Yeah. Like if I spend time working on it. Uh, I would say you need to either, if you don't already have, get a poisoner or an alchemist kit. But you could do it if you. Have. Okay. Um. Can I'll, I'll ask her if she has got an alchemist kit as well because I do not have one. Uh, I'm sure I have the supplies to put one together. Uh. <clears throat> For, for all that, we could call it uh, gold pieces. Yeah, I'll buy that up. So, and then if with the potion, though, the potion will cost you an additional 40. Sure, okay. I think we're we're interested in the, the potion, the alchemist, al alchemist kit, the, uh, the two sets of armor. And then um, <clears throat> would you happen to have any... I've heard rumor of... Uh, um, kind of a, a a drum to help folks more magically, musically inclined like myself. Would you have one of those? And if not, that's that's okay. I understand they're they're harder to come by. Um, but I think my other friends might also be interested in kind of some some magical weapons if you have those. I don't think I have any instruments. I can't say I've ever bought a magical instrument. I do apologize. Uh, it's okay. As far as magical weapons, I do believe that would be more of the spellbound home as the buys them and enchants them himself. Wonderful. Um, you wouldn't happen to have any healing potions on hand, though, would you? Oh, I do. Yes. <clears throat> Just set out, you know, a set of healing potions, which I wish I could hand you again. Uh. But, uh. I do have this box, and she slides it forward and pulls it open. It has uh, five greater healing potions. And how much would those run us each? Uh, you're looking at uh, 300 gold pieces per potion. And the and the two regulars you had were... Oh, uh, those uh, are only 100. Those are 100, okay. <clears throat> So 300 for the chain, 300 for the chain, 50 for the potion, and the alchemist kit. Um, I'll take one of the regulars and one of the graders as well. Well, I, I bought I bought the alchemist kit. I, you don't have to like worry about that. No, I'm I'm sorry. I'm saying it all in character because I'm right. trying to like he, lump he's it together. To get us a deal. For like a little bit of coin back. So with uh, with your previous perception check, sorry, not perception. With your previous persuasion check that uh, I had you roll, for, uh, and everything that you're buying. Zago will kind of look it over. So go back to that uh, book she had and start flipping through it. Assume it's probably her ledger. Uh, I could part with everything for a flat thousand. Everything that you you asked for. Leave my that sounds that sounds pretty good to me. I'll t I'll take one of the I'll take the well, second think... regular. Did my math wrong? I'm oh, sorry. That was a flat thousand for all five of the potions. Oh, for all five? Yes. 
I can I can sponsor most of that if someone would like to chip in a, a bit. Yeah, I can throw it in. I throw a ninety. I've I've got at least what I had for my armor, so three hundred. <laughs> no, the the ninety will cover it. Yeah, I would like to throw in three hundred. Oh, okay, Mister Money. <laughs> no, the, no, the the thousand is just for the potions. No, 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 the, the thousand is for everything. Everything. So the the two sets of armor. The two, the two, so the, the, the two sets of armor, the uh, sleeping potion, the alchemist kit, uh, and five greater healing potion. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I'm throwing in 300. <clears throat> okay, so 300. I you a steep deal, sir. Jesus. Yeah, I'll throw in, I, I'll put in four. You did roll like a 24. I will, I will throw in my 200. So what are we up to? We're up to 300 plus. We're up to. You put. Three, five. 90, 590. I'll put in 200. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I put in 400, and you put in 300. So 7 plus the 200, 900. So we only right. needed 100 more. All right, so I'll I got put in 100. 100. Oh, okay. Yeah, Are we 100 still going down. to the other shop after? Probably. Okay. Since we're hungry hippos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoever whoever sure. wants a greater healing potion can go ahead and take one. I'm taking one. I'll grab one because I will be uh, fuck dealing with people. I'll be fine. Is it greater, correct? Okay, so everyone, everyone but Kel gets one then. Got it. Uh, DM, remind me in this specific campaign, but also the other. I probably clarify it. Is, is it a bonus action to drink a potion? Uh, yes. So it is a bonus action to drink okay. a potion and a full action to use. Just wanted to be sure. Also, DM or uh, other two DMs, <clears throat> it is. It, is it just Elven Chain? Because that's the one that's yes. popping up. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. I, I was just checking. Thank you. For so it was a greater potion healing guy. Oh, what annoying me. Hmm. Oh, we bought Elven Chain, not Mithril, didn't we? Uh, yeah. yeah, the one that gives doesn't give you disadvantage on. <gasps> Beautiful kitty. Well, um, that would be he, Mithril. He was clawing at me to get in my lap. Oh yeah, What's that would be name? that would be Mithril then. Mithril was the one that doesn't yeah, so impose it's disadvantage. Elven. Elven is a plus one. So it's Mithril, Lissa. Mithril chainmail. What's Sorry, I kitty? misunderstood what you were asking earlier. That's okay. Okay. Sorry, I got it wrong in my mind. <clears throat> it's okay. I went to the same place when she said it. I was like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Was that which, which cat was that, Matt? I, I think like, Lisa wanted to know. Oh, that's Titus. <gasps> yeah. Beautiful. Love her. Yeah. There you go, fixed it. Thank you very much. But he he does this frequently whenever we play. He paws at people's arms and wants to get in their laps. Our cat used to come up and and uh, just yell at us while we were playing Wendy. It was very. <laughs> But is that all you guys need? Uh, I do have to get back to, to my bookkeeping. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, yeah thank Zager, you. You've been fantastic. Can you keeping your books? Uh, it's okay. I had some extra money to spare. Uh, and your friend seems like such a charming fellow. I try. Well, he, he speaks highly of you almost every time he's uh, talking about acquiring anything in town. I do appreciate that. He often says you have a lot of junk in your trunk. Don't. Well, well I, some well, people do consider things here drunk. Or drunk. Junk. <laughs> I consider quite a few things right now drunk. Anyway, I think we'll be heading on over <clears throat> to collect some of our other. Uh, just a few other things we purchased. But thank you very much. We'll, we'll take our leave of your presence. Uh, thank you for your time. Well, thank you for your money. <laughs> Safe passage to be with you. Uh, one thing I should add. Uh, Alden is a bit of a tinkerer as well as an enchanter. Be careful of his creations. I hear explosions over there all the time. <clears throat> well, uh, sounds, sounds exciting. Good to know. Thanks for the info. Interesting. <laughs> uh, is there are more anything explosive we ought to know about. I mean, you flutz with a lot. Don't worry about it. 
It's all good. Oh, well, I'm sure you two will be fast friends. <laughs> well, let's go off of this spellbound tome, shall we? Let's do it. You guys make your way through, uh, back through Winding Road City sure. here, and eventually you just basically turn the corner and you find uh, the spellbound tome on basically a small uh, wooden building with a uh, bit of a tower uh, like uh, picture to it. And as you pass through the front door and enter in through the spellbound, the building on the inside is quite larger than it appears from the outside. So as you enter into this tower esque like building, it goes from being like a tower, as you see it as a tower on the outside, but as you enter in, like you're in a giant foyer. Hmm. So looking around, you can see uh, a bit of black smoke rolling out of the back room, and you see a, a small, uh, small man come out coughing. <laughs> Damn thing! He's like fiddling with some kind of ball in his hand. Uh, I'm gonna take a <clears throat> few steps back. What you got there, friend? Uh, damn thing! I'm working on. I took aether. I put it into a bomb. Right. Now I throw it. <laughs> and this one, Brilliant. I'm trying to combine. Red one and the green one make like a smoke. Not working. Hmm. Seems very aggravated with what he's working on. <clears throat> That's tricky. I kind of elbow Faramore. I think this is more your speed than mine. <clears throat> maybe, maybe so. Yeah. Look, we're we're looking to buy. Uh, oh, what can I buy? you have anything? What would you guys like to buy? Well... Oh, shit. What are we- are we looking for items? Weapons? Well, I have many of those things, much of which I enchant myself. Uh, I enchanted one of these. Well, not this one. This one's broken. But I have more. Are they, uh... How are they the same? Are they different? Are they they do they do different things? So I I took aether, I, I infused it into metal, and now this metal uh, can essentially remember magical properties. Uh, for instance, watch, and she'll take a fire, come summon a firebolt in her hand, throws it at the ball, it disappears into the ball, throws the ball, and then the firebolt reappears as she throws it. So the metal retains magical properties for a short time and can be used at a later date. You can kind of throw it to make it into a bomb. That's mighty impressive. I like the idea. Uh, how much do these cost? Uh, well, it depends on what level spell you're trying to put into it. It's 25 gold for the casing, and then about for the materials to do it, you're looking at another 25 gold per level. Ooh. <laughs> that gets expensive pretty quick. <laughs> I'll I'll rain check you on that one, friend. Yeah, I, I love the idea, but I am I am extremely poor right now. <laughs> Grenades aren't cheap, baby. Oh no, Dylan's poor. No, it's okay. I got enough to buy the things I need, but I don't got anything else. So what would happen if I were to cast heat metal on it? Would it just continuously heat itself up indefinitely? Uh, I haven't tried. That's a good idea. He starts making notes. <laughs> Creates a supernova that causes the heat death in the universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't wait till next week. We're all dead. You discovered real fusion. <laughs> Like, uh, yeah. 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 fucking fission or something going on over here. Problem, if that's it. Friend, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I might take you up on that, depending on what other entities we find amongst your shop. I do oh. think I have two compatriots that are looking for kind of more magical weapons. Through that door right there. So, points over to a door on the side, and as you walk over and you open it, 
It opens back up into the same room. You're standing on the opposite side of the wall. Aha, I gotcha. So they're, they're right over here on the wall. Huh, mighty tricky. I'll walk over to the weapons. <laughs> Theramore, is everything in there about to be uh, as volatile as that? Well, I don't know. I haven't looked at him yet. <laughs> I thought you I think the odds are good, though. stuff. Oh. Uh... <sighs> okay. I will stride in, but only into the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> walking through the door to walk back to the other side of the building. Oh no! I'm, I when we when we make our entrance, I will just oh. kind of stand at the precipice of it. Gotcha. Okay, I gotcha. Uh, Dunatar and uh, Mazas, are you guys looking for more magical means of kind of hitting shit? It's not really my forte. It's uh, it's Mazas. Mazas, bless you. Yeah. And it's... Hmm. Durantar, but my hammer does smash pretty well these days. I'm not sure if I need any help. Plus, we're potentially looking to have not so much conflict, really. I wouldn't turn down an advancement per se of my base capabilities, but most of what I achieve is through Udintir and Eldatir. The weapon I wield is of little consequence. <clears throat> Fantastic. Uh, well then, friend, I'll ask you this. Uh, we had just come from one of your competitors, and as much as I... That bitch Zega? Hmm? That bitch Zega? You went to her place first? We did, and she wasn't quite the salesman and or the enchantress we were looking for. She didn't have the magical means well, that I... Of course I... she don't. She's an idiot. Oh, of course. She, uh, <clears throat> she talked down on you like she always does. Do and we, we kind of uh, came over here because see, I didn't into a pocket, he pulls out a little red ball. He's like, I better throw this fucking fireball at that bitch. <laughs> well, let's go back. She did, she did speak, I don't want to say ill of you, but she did say that <clears throat> while she didn't have specific magical items that we may have been seeking, you would have less of a chance. I think she. She doubted your capability to find and acquire specific magical items. Oh, I have lots of things. Do you have magical drums? Uh, no. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. There's a reasoning behind me saying no. You'll find out. That's no. It's fine. <laughs> I gotta keep asking, though. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Magical. Well, let me la let me ask you this: Is there a <laughs> do you have anything you could, um, or I guess anything of, of ours that you could infuse? Is there any infusions? I could do. You like or I could do things like that. At? It'll take me some time to enchant things, but I could do it. What's your uh, specialty? I don't want to make any guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm. What are you looking for? I'm, I guess I would consider my specialty just turning a regular weapon into a magical weapon. Well, you said you could enchant I... a regular weapon into a magical weapon. <clears throat> Precisely. I know I have this. Uh, <clears throat> this here rapier. Do you think you could make this a little bit more magical? I tend not to use it, but if I if I need to, I'd like it to, you know. I could work for the right price. What kind of what kind of coin are you talking there, friend? Materials, time. Because I'm feeling lazy. Five hundred gold pieces. Five hundred gold pieces. Okay. <clears throat> Perhaps I'll just hope no one gets close to me. Yeah, they're maybe over. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best way to turn down a, a shopping offer I've ever heard. Oh, I just hope I don't die. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> well, that is uh, that is my price. I apologize. Although I do wish the best of luck of you. 
I respect your price and I respect your items, uh, <clears throat> but I'm going to have to politely decline. Yeah, God forbid he throws a grenade at you. Well, <laughs> we can hope. We're like an Etsy seller's journey. <laughs> This is the D&D Etsy shop we were all looking for. We just oh, didn't know it. I got, I got one, one last question for you, good That's sir. Um, do you have any um, raw materials you might be wearing to part with? Like maybe some rings or uh, mm -hmm. bottles? Got a box of junk. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll look through it if you got it handy. Here. Why not? One gold piece. Whole box is yours. Can I, like, look at it first? <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, if you want, yeah. start pouring through and it's uh, various different uh, metals and leathers and ropes and iron and steel buckles and hooks and a box of junk. <laughs> Steve's like a crossover between a Jawa and a terrorist. <laughs> 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 the diagram is just a circle. <laughs> that was such a perfect analogy of this character. I love it. What race is he well, again? I love. You guys never asked, and I didn't say. But, uh... <laughs> Sorry. Is uh, he a gnome? Yes, he is. A officially gnome. race Jawa. Is he wearing a hood? He's not wearing a hood. He's wearing two goggles. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, so not a gnome, a halfling. <laughs> oh, okay. Close enough. Same difference as someone like fucking Darumar over there. <laughs> Tiny folk. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> friend, I, 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 I'm sorry. I did have one more <clears throat> quick item I'm looking for. I think a couple of us have uh, difficulty seeing. It says, Do you have any goggles that could potentially help us with that? How much? Tell you what, you, you tell me you're not going back to Zegas anymore, and you have them. If you have two sets, I'll give you 50 gold and a, and a fine promise that we're not going to head back to Zegas. How many here don't, how many people here don't have night vision? <laughs> well, I, I don't. I could cast light, but that's about it. Oh, you don't have it either? Oh, Jesus. I would have asked for three. I'm sorry, bud. I'm just walking. It's good. <clears throat> okay, uh, 21. Easy enough. He'll run into the back room, come back out. 50 gold, and they're both yours. Thank you kindly. And, and that's a good thing, too, because I rolled, a, I rolled a d4, and you only had two. <laughs> 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 All right, someone could just hold my hand. Why do I feel like this is gonna be the campaign of taking on the looks at him? Very large hand. I know, I'm getting that vibe too. <laughs> I'll hand, I'll hand one pair to. Or, wait, sorry, you won't have to hold my hand. You can hold my trunk. That's okay. I got 150 feet. I'd rather I'm hold your hand. Thank I'll you. I myself <laughs> drone and carry him around. They literally won't fit. I know they're a magic item, but he's big. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm gonna, we're going to gonna say that it won't fit. The, the, I'm gonna run it with a it. That uses one of the glasses as a monocle. Okay. Well, <laughs> I would like to agree with Chet. How much is the store? I want an elephant yeah, with a we're monocle. Not, we're, not buying, we're not buying the store. We're not going back to Friday's session. We just decided we're going to try and buy the tavern. That's so funny. I have brewery supplies. We can always just set up shop and make money for a couple months. And then there you go. Out. You know, this campaign's going to turn into you guys running a shop. <laughs> What's the urgency of this sword being recovered? I'm kind of interested in this. <laughs> hey, it's your guys' campaign, we so you can run however you want to do. I'm just here to tell the story. Yep. The night. Me? Yes. I thought you were giving him to him. He didn't want him. <gasps> okay. <laughs> tell me, Alden, uh, if one were to try to acquire enough lumber to set up a building about the same size as you. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> it's like slowly pulling a, pulling a small little bomb out of his pocket. What are you trying to do? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Uh, it's just... I'm sorry. I get a little bored on shopping trips. 
One thing I will tell you, if you don't ever want to spend your spells, I do have some on hand that are already ready for your go. Uh, just so you know, I have five that I do myself. Uh, fireball, Cloud Kill, Call Lightning, Fog Cloud, and Hunger of Hadar. How are those stored? The ball! Oh. Remember, he said he could put, like, put, you know, magic yeah, in yeah. the ball. So that, like, what? Like, one of the fireball ones would probably be, like, 175, or what is it, 200? Well, since I do it myself, I'd make it a little bit cheaper, because uh, I'm not having to work with someone else's magic. Uh, fireball is 100. What was wow. the second one you said? Cloud kill. What does that do? I, I, oh, sorry, I'll look it up. I apologize. I don't do that. Right. Well, I'm fucking poor. Oh, no, I'm not. That's right. I didn't spend any money. I mean, I could buy a couple of these pre-made spells if you guys want. <clears throat> What's the, um, and what was the last one you mentioned? I hadn't heard that Hunger one before. Hunger of Vidar. Hunger of Vidar is pretty good. A fun spell. It's pretty good area, area denial. Not to meta game too hard, but if you're if you're able to look up this if if Matt says you don't have a problem with you looking up the spell, I would assume you would. You can look up the spell because you well, yeah, know just, unless you want to RP it out, he'll explain to you how each one works. But uh, I don't even know if I could cast those, any of them. But your good friend what? Google can tell you how. He... Yeah, this or strange... the player's handbook for for that matter. Strange source of Maybe knowledge. Old Google. <laughs> Ye, ye old goddess Google. <laughs> oh wow, that is crazy. It's a fun spell. Yeah, it is. Uh, that one is also a hundred gold. I'm assuming it's an action to use the device. Fuck it, I'll buy one. Hunger Adar. How do I add this, or should I just like uh, make a note somewhere? Just make a note because since there's so many different spells, I didn't add them all. Into... It's all good. I'll get rid of my blank pen and my rabbit foot because those are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so you just make a note that you have an aether bomb that is filled with hunger of Hadar. Neat. <clears throat> just some sort of roll associated with those. I probably should have asked first. Uh, so it is your dex modifier. It, it is considered a <laughs> a dex thrown weapon. I know, that's why I wanted to get it, and you were, uh, because I'd be able to throw it. Uh. Ah. Yeah. I mean, I could throw it. Monk is dope. It might not hit. <laughs> I mean, it is an area effect, so I mean, it's gonna land somewhere close to the vicinity you want, probably. We'll toy with it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'll eventually learn I'm no good at this shit, and you'll have it. It's fine. Uh, it is a one-time use, I will, will remind you. No, I know. I know. But I'll I'll throw some stones practicing and realize I'm dog shit at this and give it to him. It's fine. Hundred gold pieces coming out. So he he basically goes back and brings out this uh, small little black ball. Uh, here you go. Do not drop it. Oh, uh, hey, oh shit! Oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. It's fine. <laughs> Just kill the whole shop right now. Well, if we're uh, if we're good here, or I'm I think good. We're good. I think we should probably attempt. Well, I don't know. It has been, like, hasn't been long enough, but we should move on. I think it's sewer time. I mean, mm, I, I was gonna sewers. say for, talk, for, talk for all sewers. of you guys doing this, your your clothes would be done. Uh, and like getting later into to the day now, uh, it is probably early afternoon. So you would know that the gala is only a few hours from starting and uh, is only a few hours from sun. Who knows what we'll find down there? I mean, he did say unsavory people, or I forget what he said. Unsavory I think it was unsavory. So there Unsav are yeah. uh, unsavory uh, back 40, but yes. Do well, it doesn't matter because I don't have key mines, so it's no big deal. Say that again, sorry. Is there a way for me to package my ball gown? <laughs> I know this sounds crazy. Hear me out. Uh, package my ball gown so that it doesn't touch the sewage, doesn't smell bad. Yep. This and very much once I get up there, it doesn't look terrible. <clears throat> If it helps, DM, this is very much the same thing I was going to ask like before we me... left the shopping district proper. Let me let me do this because you have an artificer. I had thought about this too. An artificer in your group. Uh, 
Theramar, roll percentile dice. Oh, please roll high. Or low, I don't know what's good. I don't who, knows, who knows what's good? <laughs> roll something. 26. 26, okay. Uh, you, through your travels and through your creations, have came across a, a fellow tinkerer uh, known as Fizzlin, and you can add two pocket marbles to your inventory. Hell yeah! <clears throat> pocket marbles? Pocket marbles. Then mm. whenever she pulls it up, she'll build Yeah, I was about to say, I have no idea. I'll tell you right now, it's a pocket right now, it's it's a sand. Yeah, it's a little Pokeball <laughs> idea. <laughs> Twenty foot radius. A small oh. circular steel orb with a single brass ring running around the center and a small button at the top of it. When the button is pressed, the top half of the ball folds in on itself. Down to the brass ring revealing what appears to be a never ending black hole. The hole leads to its own pocket dimension. But it can only hold five cubic feet of space. Oh shit, yeah. we should be able to fit all of our fucking gallic lows in like one of those. Do it, Lisa? Uh never mind. Go on. That's no, it might be. Say say what you're gonna After... say. I I just it is the black hole like a washing machine. Like if do we dip it in there and take so, it out? Like... So it, it's, it it's is a... it's like a tiny little a own pocket thing. dimension that only holds five feet, uh, a five foot cubic space uh, of items. Uh, nothing living, of course. Uh, <gasps> so we can put it in there. We can put it in oh. there. In the yeah, it's like a miniature bag of holding. Okay, so it's not like we get it dirty and then get it clean. We put it in there and it doesn't get dirty. That makes yeah. some more sense. Yeah, and you don't have a train on your elaborate dress that's very nice. Um, so we could fit it all in one ring, probably. Just... I mean, five yeah. cubic feet of clothing. Jeez, for the five of us? Sorry, six. There's six of us. So we're good. Gucci. I don't know. I well, think, I think Druid Man's clothes it's just by itself or five cubic. Well, I think we're fine. I don't know about good. I mean, we should probably find a room to wash up a little bit. Well, uh, yeah, we all had those baths in the in the, the ruby rope, the rose thing. The, well, geez, I just mean the like ro rose water, room? room. Sewage. Yeah. That seems like something that might stay on our skin for a little while. That isn't uh, entirely my problem, but... Uh, Jax, at them talking about this, you would know that the path, there are... The way the sewer is, there are pathways on either side of the sewage in the center where you guys could walk that is not necessarily clean, but you're also not going to get sewage waste all over. Sewer isn't as bad as you're making it out to be. While, yes, it is dirty and smelly, but there are uh, areas for it to avoid the majority of it. Nice. Good. Well, and if you really needed to stop smelling, I could probably wash you in holy fire. Did it anyone would not be pleasant. Or herbs? I mean... <laughs> I'm sure we'll figure something out. I can get creative. Udatir gives me a great many things. Just put you up against the wall and gust of wind. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, I've got a bunch of these spells that I could obviously try to RP to. Yeah, whatever. you could. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see what works. I got I literally have wall of water. Like, you want to get washed off? I'll put you in a wall of water. <laughs> hey, that would be that's funny. Fair. I just gotta smell not like sewer, and we're good. Well, I, yeah, I can. Or I could blame it on my elephant counterpart. One of the two. I mean, I can purify food and drink. <laughs> Neither food nor drink. <laughs> But you, but you can't. Like a snack, though. But yeah, you are you can't looking like a snack? Food. Yep. <laughs> I was waiting for that. I was thinking that myself too. I needed that today. If you're looking like a snack, you could be purified. Thank you. <laughs> or I could cast gentle repose on you. Doesn't really work, but yeah. 
No, that's wrong. Delays decomposition, not sewage smell. <laughs> but sewage is decompensating. What is I think he's not I mean, entirely wrong. Have you lost the shop yet? Have we left the shop yet? I assume yet? you guys left, left the shop. Uh, when okay. picked up uh, Drachar's custom clothes and started making your way to the... Uh, sure, sure. So, when yeah. we left, I, I wanted to... Uh, so... <laughs> I can only do this so many times a day, and I'm sure maybe things might get a little hairy later, but I would like to share these with you, and I would give... Sorry, I gotta pull my notes up real quick. Uh, I'm gonna give Druntar, I guess I'll call it a muffin. I'll give him one of my muffins. I get your muffin? Yeah, you get my muffin. Shut and, up. Uh, and, um, and what does your muffin Sabastic, taste like? I'll give Saboxic my other muffin. <laughs> Pennies. So basically, but no, you should eat it. Once you eat it, you get uh, three temp health. Oh, uh, what's this? What? 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 Are you, what is this? Without without asking any questions, I'm gonna bump. <laughs> it should um, it should help you in a time of need. Oh, hold on, this is edible. Very much. <laughs> For people not just like him. For everyone. Okay. Oh. Oh, I had never. What is it made of? I like poke it. You'll never know until you try it. That's, oh, it's I... really not bad. Oh. Uh, I like take a bite. Your boy's never had a muffin before. Like, <laughs> bad news. You said three? Yeah, just three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's. It's like a fine muffin. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of. Good. It's like a sponge, but it's worse. <laughs> but wait, it's worse. wait! You've eaten a sponge? Well, no. I no. I haven't eaten a sponge, but that's what it feels like. Something a sponge wait. eater would say. Wait, hold on. I've never seen a sponge. What's a sponge like? <sighs> it's a creature of the depths. It's actually one of the ley lines. Uh, you can communicate if you're <coughs> in tune enough, when you're deep enough. In the water. The, you, yeah. yeah. So Sponges when you. are actually far more intelligent than any of these surface creatures give them credit for. So people only go underwater to talk to sponges and learn their wisdoms? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, sponges are only, uh, well, they may be deep for you, but I would say they only begin to scratch the surface. You haven't seen the true depths of the oceans. Speaking of true depths, are we heading to the sewers? God, I fucking hope so. <laughs> Well, there be, there be sponges down there? So. No, <laughs> that's... Well. You have to go a lot deeper than the sponges. Big boy. To the sewers! Are you guys just, uh, are you guys gonna make your way, I guess, is Jack's gonna lead you guys to the entrance through the Tranquil Athenaeum within the Order of the Bronze Salamander, or are you guys just gonna drop in through one of the... I would ask Jax to do so. Well, well, please. Oh, uh, if people see a bunch of people jumping down a well, that could be kind of sus. Uh, I mean, you're right. Uh, you guys would know that you pass through some of the wells within this district that's kind of darker and where you might find some that are <clears throat> a little uh, easier to crawl down through. But either way, both are good choices. So, so there are more than one. Mm -hmm. Well, there, mm -hmm. yeah, there are... I think maybe we should do three and three and drop down two different wells, meet up. Uh, how, I think how far I have a lot of assumption that we're going to find each other. But if <clears throat> six people show up, show up where? If we go through the Athenaeum, it shouldn't be a pro problem. We're not going to watch us do it. That's a good point. Jax, work your magic. Let's do that Athenaeum. Yeah. I think that's fine. You guys make your way over to the uh, other end of the Cobalt District after doing your shopping here and in through the Tranquil Athenaeum. Come in and you guys enter in. 
at this building that is just made of marbled gray stone. It, each stone that has been appears to have been meticulously placed so that the marbled white lines of it all run through through to give it the appearance of a single slab. Uh, on the front of the building, you guys see the massive uh, sign of Rahalan sigil uh, hanging from uh, two banners hanging from either side of the front of the building. The two massive uh, twelve foot tall wooden doors accented with silver brackets and two massive silver handles on each. Uh, on the leftmost corner of the building, you can see a large tower, the uh, familiar large spiraling tower that you guys had seen that just stretches up into the clouds. And you can see large over uh, oval shaped dome of the uh, top where you know uh, some of you that have visited before know that they have a miraculous machine known as a telescope that was built for them by a tinkerer out of the city of Zakarat. Uh, traveled from far lands known as, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but is this, which name is this? Uh, this would be Qatar El... Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm speaking Elsine, to my character's right? accent. Correct. This would be Qatar Elsine. Built yep. by uh, Qatar Elsine, specifically for the Athenaeum, uh, to view the stars and the other uh, worlds that are out there from a distance. So, as you guys enter in, you guys find yourselves just this massive library. Looking around, there's just rows and rows of books and a large circular spiral staircase in the center going up and down. Jax, this is a familiar sight to you, knowing that the spiral staircase that leads downward leads to the sect of the Bronze Salamander, where their headquarters are. I will lead them down. <clears throat> As you go over to the, to the desk and you meet with the uh, man, uh, Fiden, you, uh, your superior, you know, sitting there and you talk with him a little bit. You speak to him and tell them these are companions of yours, uh, yes. and with your with your new rank, you are easily going to start leading them down through the spiral staircase to the Order of the Bronze Salamander. You guys pass by a couple rooms. Uh, those of you that are a little more in tune to the arcane, passing by uh, what appears to be a magical circle in one room, perhaps maybe a circle of teleportation of sorts. Uh, in another room, you guys <laughs> pass by some sort of alchemist room where you can see a bunch of different boiling and bubbling beakers and all kinds of very eventually you do find uh, a small sloping down staircase that leads down into what appears to be does anybody know where we're going you do. oh i do like i actually <laughs> you know i actually you you would be the only person in this group that would be able to navigate the uh treacherous maze that is this Okay, okay. No, I didn't realize I had knowledge on all the sewers. Okay. Oh, you're good. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so then, okay. And then at this point, I would... So we're going for the manor first, correct? I would okay. imagine so. Yep, yeah. and I yeah. will begin to lead us in the direction that that would take us. Easy enough. So you guys start making your way, and... Smell is a little, uh, a little strong. And uh, as you guys are walking through... You, you're passing through, and you can hear the the rust hustle and bustle of the streets above, and you can hear the uh, rustling of the carts and different things going throughout the streets. Uh, and as Jack starts leading you guys, and you pass through the different districts, and you can peer up through the different wells of the different districts as you're passing through. And uh, right before you're about to pass one, someone dumps a bucket of kitty. Yeah. I help you. <laughs> 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 And someone dumps, dumps a bucket of waste in down the uh, one of the wells. It almost splats and hits you guys, but narrowly mm. you guys missed it. Oh, Easy. But the the smell it's is like a definitely, shower. definitely strong. I'm hungry. <laughs> One little snack. As we continue on, I'll just uh, I'd like to simply just remark, you know, I think that was probably the nicer of the two Athenaeums I've ever. Uh, visited and or heard of so what happened uh, at the first one i've never seen it personally back home uh some of the creatures where i'm from are kind of pass in between the fey wild and uh they were marked on a an athename they had visited in a in a in a different realm that was not quite as nice you know you care to explain that that's a little uh vague no, they just heard tales of this uh, Elkath Akanaeum that was, uh, you know, they said it was good, but uh, 
didn't live up to how many books were in that one, you know? <clears throat> I'm sorry, so you learn about sewers in your spare time? No, he was talking about the library. I don't understand. There's another one of these. Where? It's fine. It's fine. You know what? Let's just 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 dodge the shit and we'll just keep going. <sighs> Literally. Okay. Dodge the shit. What great advice. <laughs> uh, that was so good. You sneaky fucker. <laughs> I like it. So as you guys are passing passing through the different uh warding or winding corridors of the of this sewer, you do pass by a few what you can assume to be homeless men, uh do pass by even a few skeletons just hang throughout here. People that have gotten lost within this maze that it that is these and perished after a long time being down here. And you do pass there are down the different sections of the corridors you can see what appear to be almost small fires and Various people of different races and looks gather around these fires, and they all look in your direction as you get by, and they just go back to like whatever they're doing. But Jax eventually Any does lead you. Skeletons that look particularly interesting. Say that again. Any races of skeletons or anything dead that looks particularly interesting. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check for me. Races. Oh no, I'm scared. Nineteen. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't have pulled up. Um, nineteen. <laughs> Most skeletons appear humanoid in nature. Maybe some have some elven, more elven features. There's one that stands out. One that stands uh, maybe about eight feet tall. Uh, that of a dragonborn skeleton. One oh. dragonborn that appeared to have been massive, and there is a sword in his ribcage. Okay. That doesn't bode well. So as you guys continue through through these winding well, corridors, hold on. A Does she like share this with everybody or? Yeah, I absolutely. I would. Oh. Uh. Jeez, sorry. Character name. Shit. Fuck. Hold on. Well. Cal. Cal. Um, Cal is me. What's got you paused? Uh. This appears to be a rather large dragonborn. Um, hmm. Obviously pretty dead um, with a sword through their body. That seems like a cause for pause for me. What is that? Does that mean anything to you? To anyone? DM doesn't mean anything to me. I simply question your definition of pretty dead. <laughs> it looks more dead than any of us. Yeah. Did you? Not wrong. Are, we, are any of us curious about them and whether it means anything to them? <laughs> I'm simply uh, hopeful. Dragonborn are those scaly raced individuals, yes? They have a lineage. It's, well, <laughs> in past times, they were conquerors of above the sea. While I and my kind have maintained guardianship beneath long ago. So though. Your, your partners or your enemies? Neither. <clears throat> Twins of a twin world. Are we curious if this warrior wants to explain anything about their death? I could ask. DM, can I examine that specific skeleton <clears throat> or corpse a little bit more? Sure, make a medicine check for me. Sorry, one more time. One more time. Uh, medicine check. Medicine. Uh, Twelve. Are you proficient in medicine? I don't believe so. Nope. Uh, looking over this body and not being one who's familiar with examining corpses uh, doesn't seem that the telltale signs of anything that really stands out significant about it. Here's from the board being through it. Was F for dead. 
I don't mean to skill dogpile DM, so feel free to turn me down, but I want to try to make a sense of this scene. Because there's a couple, right? A couple there is. So they're, they've been scattered about as you guys have been walking through. The Dragonborn is by himself. Do I make any semblance of what might have happened? At, uh, if and I know that's kind of a hard call, but... Make an investigation check. <laughs> I would... Thorough. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I would also like, while he's doing that, to ask if the Dragonborn had a weapon on him. Uh, not appeared. Okay. Well, I got very lucky. It's a 19 minus, uh, investigation, you said minus one, so 18. Uh, so kind of taking a, a closer look, uh... Sorry, repeat your, your question for me, so I'm giving you... I wanted to make a sense of, like, what... Obviously, there's a couple dead bodies down here. I'm imagining left long behind. Yes. I'm not trying to be crime scene CSI, but I'm trying to understand what might have occurred here in this sewer. If that makes it, any sense. It appears, maybe with a little bit of a, look, a closer look that you're kind of looking <clears throat> at, you can tell the way the body lays and it's just like perfectly propped up against the wall doesn't appear as if he died here. It looks more as if he was. Mm -hmm. You know, I I could have the means to ask this individual the natures of her death. It well, seems like they were moved here. Do you think it's going to help us on our current adventure? It could at least find <clears throat> out what kills it. I can't say particularly. Putting together the scene, those bodies down the hall there, and, and this one up here. It's, uh, it's not the kind of thing I would have imagined, uh, looks like this person was moved here. Normally I wouldn't care about bodies in a sewer, but a dragonborn down here is a little odd. And it is along the way on our path, and maybe this, maybe this is all a tangent and isn't related to anything given the decomposition. I still think that would be relevant information. It could be a, a clue to a larger intrigue. So, DM, just because I don't want to sound like a cleric who knows what the fuck he's saying, the corpse must still have a mouth and can't be undead. A skeleton has a mouth? Sure, That's up you to are, you. Correct. Skeletons has okay. a jaw, so I would say he has a mouth. Okay. Are you familiar with Speak With Dead, or do I need to read uh, it, or do you want to read it? I mean, I'm familiar, but if you want to... You grant the semblance of life and intelligence to a corpse of choice within your range, allowing it to answer the questions you pose. Must still have mouth, must not be undead, yada yada. Spell fails if the corpse was the target of this spell within the last ten days. Until the spell ends, you can ask the corpse up to five questions. The corpse knows only what it knew in life, including the languages it knew. Answers are usually brief, cryptic, or repetitive and the corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer if you are hostile to it or it recognizes you as an enemy. Right. The spell doesn't return the creature's soul to its body, only its animating spirit. Thus, the corpse can't learn new information, doesn't comprehend anything that has happened since it died, and can't speculate about future events. So, uh, if I was to do this, I would have five questions. And I... I I, I deign the idea that we are wasting time, but this could <clears throat> highlight a larger mystery. This sword, by the way, have we taken a look at it? Sorry. Nope. We haven't. I'll take a look at the sword. <laughs> are you pulling it out of his body? No, I'll just kind of, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a full skeleton, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just kind of, like, look it up and down, the uh... pommel, the hilt. The, in the uh, very butt of the blade, there is a small ruby embedded in it, and, and there are leather wraps going around the butt of the blade. It is a fairly well-polished silver sword. Uh, strange, because it doesn't appear that there's any blood stains on it. I'll pull it out, having looked all of that over. Okay. You pull it out, it appears to be a uh, sword that has been silvered. 
Nice. <laughs> I just want to look my recently newfound friend up and down. Any changes? Oh. Nice. I'll tuck the sword into the other side from where my rapier sit. Looks like your first time handling something of that length. Well. <sighs> well. Uh, I think our questions for it should be something along the lines of who are you, what were you doing here, and what killed you? Is it... You'll get it. Still worth it. Well, I think that's up for you to decide. Oh, I was willing. I mean, it's the the Shouldn't offer hasn't been rescinded. It's it's your I mean, magic. It's, it's a big spell of mine, but it's not the kind of spells. Depending on how much we run across, that I'd <clears throat> be deigned to not find myself in the black manner with. How much trouble do you think we're gonna run into tonight? <clears throat> well, uh, we don't have many archmages where I come from. But I've heard over the many, many stories and legends of their power. I'd recommend, perhaps, if you're still curious after tonight, we might be able to return to the sewer and uh, reinvestigate this corpse, assuming it doesn't move again. Well, we need to make a decision. Is the answers relevant? Do you need the whole corpse? I mean, that rate, that rate, do you we need the whole corpse? You could take it with it. I don't believe I do. Can the, you just take the skull? Take the skull, according to the spell. <clears throat> Grab the skull, put it in the pokeball. Oh, well, that's a thing. I'll yeah. carry it. I like a good accessory. No, I agree. It's a matter of utility. I will grab the skull and kind of pull it up so that it's, like, fully hoisted and fully tensioned, I guess. Yep. And then just swing and crack through the through the rib cage and through the basically the where the spine meets here about yeah. the collarbone. Sternum. Yeah, sternum. Sorry, I got the wrong. I haven't even thought of the fucking name at that point in your body. Yeah. I'll just crush everything in between. Yeah. Cool. I mean, uh, here you go. One dragonborn skull. <clears throat> cool. Uh, Remind me, and I'll ask uh, questions of it later. Good well, thinking. I never thought we'd find ivory in a sewer, but let's move on. Should we uh, maybe get rid of the rest of it? Hey. I... No. That seems like the central figure. It was moved there. Let's yeah. Let's just keep moving. We got we got a long night ahead of us. A long night. Many long nights. A lot to do. continuing through the sewers to yes uh, as Jax okay Jax is leading you in deeper through the sewer. about uh 40 minutes 45 minutes goes by and you guys eventually come to the end where where Jax knows that the sewers kind of lead towards the uh the glass citadel and black man and black manor not being nearly as familiar with this area uh go ahead and just make an investigation check Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, so it, it takes you guys about another half hour. Eventually, you, you walk in circles for, for a little bit of time, but eventually you guys do come to a large circular wooden door. Uh, as you open it, you can see uh, what leads into almost like a dirt floor room. And you guys are behind what appears to be a wall of wooden casks. You peer through uh, the cast and you can see... Uh, Every once in a while, it seems as if a servant comes through. Probably about every 20 minutes, a servant comes through, grabs either another bottle of wine or a cask, some sort of small cask. You are in what you could assume to be cellar beneath the bar. Hmm. See, um, are these people coming in and out of the room, are they kind of like on clockwork, or is it kind of just sporadic? It seems like they're on clockwork. It seems as if somebody comes about roughly every 20, maybe 20. Uh, and uh, I'm guessing, can I, can we view the room? What is, like, what is, what does the room look like? Is there just one door? 
So you guys are peer, you guys are peering through what you can see in the uh, basically between the casts. It's a little blocked because you guys are behind a wall wall of casts of ale. Uh, but go ahead and make a perception check. I'll give you advantage because I assume your party is healthy. Sure. Uh, 14. 14, okay. Uh, easy enough, as you're, as you're kind of peering through, through these holes, what you can see is, uh, there are two, there is a circular staircase that is almost on the far wall, uh, or center of the wall. It looks as if it leads upwards, and then there is a long, almost shortly growing staircase off to the, off to the left, heading the direction as you're, like, thinking of it in your mind's eye that, Probably the stairway that leads towards the, uh, the glass citadel. You think we should try that uh, staircase over there on the left? Well, where does it go? Uh, if I had, uh, I got a strong hunch that leads to our observatory. Why not? I thought this was meant to split at some point and lead us between the Black Manor and. Uh, glass citadel. It described two staircases. Right, right. Yeah, oh, there's one. Might be. One on the right. Yeah. Sorry. How would we know which is which? Uh, just general sense of the lay of the land from what Jax knows, and uh, Genera, you haven't spent you haven't been in these sewers before, but you have spent some time in this city, so generally, but keeping track of where you've traveled and how far you guys have traveled between the two of you guys it's easy enough to reason that the spiral staircase going straight upwards is probably leads to black manor and the one that goes further down more like a upward arcing hallway would lead to the glass citadel would it be the time of the day that the party has already started with the amount or... of people that are coming in and out the party is definitely started. okay has they have they recently left the room uh, there's, they have recently just left the room. You guys watched as, like, the last, uh, set of, we'll call them servant, servant boys <coughs> came through and grabbed another cat. Well, I, I say if anybody has any objections, we should just go for that one. And can we hear anybody coming from the stairs that are coming from the Black Manor? So, everyone you've seen leaving is always leaving from the longer hallway-like staircase, uh, but if you would like to make a perception check, you can see if there's anyone coming. Yeah, I would. Thank you. I think that's a straight 13, but I'm going to double check. Yeah, 13. 13? Uh, from here, it uh, doesn't appear as if you can hear anybody going up or down the... I mean, up, coming down from the stairs of the black. Should we send a, should we send a small party and just go all together? Well, let's make a move. I mean, we've, yeah, I agree. Move. looking looking between my friends real quick, we've all cut our let me, let me just make our easy. loudness. Why don't and I go first? This guy is just zero. The next set of servants come thing. through. Sorry, what was that? When the clock reaches zero, the next set of servants come through. Okay, so why don't I go first? Disguised as somebody who would be going up the stairs or down the stairs. We set a reasonable <clears throat> signal, whether it's okay for the rest of you. Sure, I think, yeah, sure. If you want to go ahead, that's fine, but I think we just tail behind you like 10 to 15. I know what any of the servants or anybody up there would look like. I mean, you've seen the couple servants that have come through uh, sure. just now, so you could easily just be like, pick somebody and look at either them or similar to them. Yeah, a servant? Yeah. That has, uh, yeah. Servant, and I'll go up, and this. The what you signal... gonna do about your clothes? Run out of time. <laughs> I think we go and we be stealthy. Who here is loud? I think I'll go up. <laughs> I don't even think we need to be stealthy in, in my own clothes because I have the face. The next cycle will be around soon. Yet neither you nor I, ma'am, are, are are loud anymore. Let's just go. Let's go. Yeah, let's just go. Yeah. As we whoever, walk, whoever is sneakiest, lead us by ten feet. But it's a staircase. Let's all get on it before yeah. some wine boy finds us all behind these casks. I agree. <clears throat> As we head up, I will look at our Luxadon friend, 
<clears throat> and I will say, do you know what sprinters eat before a race? What is that, my wise, cheeky friend? They don't eat anything. They fast. And I will inspire him. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> so, right. Jarell, you now have a D8 for the next 10 minutes to add to any one skill check, attack roll, or saving throw. Okay. As you guys basically give, uh, you're looking at this castle, you see almost like you push it a little bit and then just swings open almost like a door, a false door here. And very quickly, you guys go out and everybody makes stealth checks for me, see how quiet you are as you're making your way. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Hey, come on. Oh. Stealth? 15. 14 Ooh. plus 1. I got a non-natural 20 at disadvantage. 18. Uh, I have a 14. List is gone. I can roll for her. Sure. I got 11. a 17. <laughs> okay. Drill, uh, did you use your inspiration? Uh, no, I didn't. I really kind of wanted to why, save it. Why did you have inspiration? Because I inspired him. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Different inspiration. Different inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, as you guys... What you assume to be quietly make your way through, and it's uh, and it's weird because a few of you are being loud, and then this massive elephant is just very quietly creepy across across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you make your way over to to the spiral staircase, which appears as if it is only about ten feet wide. So you guys are only be able to have maybe two of you next to each other going up. Uh, who is leading up the stairs? Um, I don't know. Is is, I will be second row, at least. I'll go first. I'll also be in the first row, I guess. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I'll be up in the front, because I'm pretty good. Okay, I'll yeah. go second row, then. <laughs> Elephant last. Elephant last. You're second row, boat. brothers. Uh, the, uh, Elle said she wanted to be in front, right? If, yeah, fine. Uh, so you guys start making your way up through this dimly lit uh, spiral staircase, and you guys don't hear anything, but after a while, as you guys start to get just out of sight, you can hear this server voice coming back and moving around some more casts and taking them back up into here to be party over it. But as you guys come up, uh, you notice as you're about to come around the corner is that this spiral staircase, there are no doors on it. It appears as if the hole that uh, you would enter into is just a wide open archway. So, uh, the two of you that are in front, uh, Kel and uh, Jax, make perception checks for me. Peek around the corner. Natural 20. Oh, it's six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Jax, be, being a man who is a cook and enjoys being a cook, you peek out and you catch a glimpse of the, uh, the kitchen and the, the door that kind of leads into it is open and you can just the smells fill your nostrils, and you get a little distracted, and you're not really paying attention, but uh, Kelly, as you're looking down the hallway, you do see a shadow from the dancing lights of a torch. Looks as if some sort of guard or someone is about to pass by on the uh, opposite end of the hall. Is about to pass by, or has already? About to pass by. So if you guys are going to move, you're going to need to do it quickly, or um, you're going to have to wait. I would minutes. like to kind of ready something as soon as I see them. Is that okay? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm sorry. This is my first time playing a paladin. Okay. Um, I I think I'm going to do... At the top of the stairs? Or, um, I'm going to go to is that okay? So I, will, I will remind you guys, no one has seen you yet. You just see the shadow of a man approaching from a dancing, yeah, from a dancing light on the far wall. He is about, okay. uh, this long hallway stretches down and tees off to two other sides, and you see that shadow on that tee. He's about, the hallway is about 30 feet long. I think, um, I think I want to kind of get to the wall and creep as far as I can up. 
Sure. I have 30 feet of movement. The spiral staircase know. does continue up farther, just so you guys know. Yeah, I'm trying to go up. Yeah, you, like, guys, we're are, you, guys, are, you guys are on the first floor, just coming up from the cellar. Yeah. I'm trying to get the guard or whoever go is there. Up. I'd like to continue up. Yeah, we just keep going. But I don't see anything. Yeah, yeah. If we don't see anything, then we can deal with it afterwards. Yeah, I thought the if plan was to go. If there's a dead up. guard, then there's nobody that can. Then there's a corpse we have to deal with, though. Yeah, and there's probably more. Whatever the fuck. Well, I I thought there were multiple levels here. Dean. There are three levels. Let's clarify. Okay, and we were trying. The intel was to get to the third. What you've been yes. told. Yes. Okay, so. Lissa, take that in mind if you haven't already. Do what you want to do, and do whatever the fuck you want to do. No, it is, no, it is no they're right. Campaign. If you if you want to go charge the guard, by all means, go charge the guard. No, I. That's what I, I'm I saying. Is like the charge will just go up. I'm no, is is I I I also would like to throw in here. I'm getting a little confused between the fucking um. I got my notes here, but it's not helping. But between the black Manor and the glass citadel. Like, where, what is. But the third level of the Black Manor was supposedly where the... the that is where her observatory is. Where the observatory mm -hmm. is and possibly the next clue. Yeah, that's where we're heading. Okay. Might be. Just wanted to be sure. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So, Lissa, I, you know, I don't know what you were thinking. I don't know if that's what you want to do. If you want to do that, go ahead. No, I think it's, yeah, like I said, uh, go the other way. I was saying, I can help you, I can support you, I just, I don't have anything to, like... No, it's good, it's good. I think that's... Do I we just have time to all probably. make it up the next level, and before the guard comes, or do we need to wait if for you, the If path? you do, you need to do it now. Yeah, we'll find out. Okay. Yeah, no, we, just keep going. We just keep going, yeah. If that was our original goal going in, I would like to ascend the stairs, assuming everybody else does. Yep. But I'm in the second row, so and I just we'll wanna, see. Yeah, and when we reach the, the, the top of that floor, I just kind of want to peek over to make sure there's nobody there, and then keep going. Yep. Great. After so, observing the whole situation, Durantar is going to say, well, don't worry about one guard. It's if there's more than one, we need to worry about trying to bypass them. And then I'll start heading up the stairs, too. Great. Easy enough, you guys. Quickly climb to the second level, and... As you peer out, it appears as if the second level is made up of mostly uh, a living quarters and a personal study. Just a wide open space. It appears as if nobody is home. You guys continuing to the third floor? Keep going. So you guys continue up to the third floor. And just for the purposes because I want to share, I will show you what it looks like. Oh, hell yeah. Oh! So you guys have ascended through a spiral staircase here. Holy shit, how long did it take you to do that brick? What'd you say? How long did it take you to do that brick? Uh, no time at all because I was gifted it. It was Dormenforge. Uh, so. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Half of it's Dormenforge, half of it's uh, 3D printed. Uh, gotcha. That's cool. Yeah. So, you guys can enter into what appears to be this personal library uh, of sorts. You, you see lines of bookshelves covered in different books and letters and scrolls and different things. And look, the room is dimly lit by uh, a few candles. And looking down the hallway, you can see the glow of a dim blue light that's kind of pulsating around the corner. Um, all right. I would like to slowly advance forward and examine the whatever that blue light is. So easy enough as you as you advance forward further into this uh, observatory uh, of sorts, and you peer around the uh, bookshelf here, you see a small little desk set up with a large red uh, red not like a reclining chair, but like a large lavish chair where you assume uh, Eltaris does most of her most of her writings and maybe makes most of her notes. And then off to the side, you see this massive blue pillar with a glass like globe on the top of it. And I want to cast Psych Magic on the globe. As you guys turn turn through, you get a strong sense of evocation magic. Uh, this pulsating blue light. Uh, as you are peering around the corner, the two of you make stealth checks. If you are doing this uh, stealthily, so. Yeah, yeah, might as well. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, Alright, uh, 22. Well, if there was no consequence to walking up and yeah, okay, never mind. 
No, you're good. I just wanted to make sure we were all together. If there wasn't a consequence beyond peeking around the corner, I would be with my friends. Yeah. Uh, right. What was your stealth roll? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yes. Okay. Uh, so Ian, you see that you peer around and just see this large pulsating crystal-like uh, tower. Uh, Alright, um, so it sounded like uh, Druntar wanted to check out the the, uh, the crystals, so I will go and start to examine the desk, maybe open some of the drawers, or, or, you know, maybe, well, you know, first I'll take a closer look to see if maybe any traps are on it. Uh, okay, uh, make an investigation. I still want to cast Detect Magic on the orb. Yeah, you already did. It gives you a strong sense of evocation. Oh, oh okay. I got a I rolled a four. Four? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so as you walk out and you start to try and look around for traps, this pulsating blue tower glows brighter and brighter and brighter. And the two of you that went out, which would be uh, Duntar and Genera, which are in its direct line of sight, unless everybody did, I need you both to make constitution saving throws. Are any of them within oh. ten feet of Cal? Boy, that was yeah, a within two feet. ten feet or of Cal. Ten feet, two feet. Yeah, no, I, I meant two squares. Are you, are you, they sorry. should have a damage. So yes, uh, they would be within ten feet. I got twenty-four. You yeah, said it's constitution correct. modifier. Correct constitution. Yeah. Good work, get one. Thirteen. You'd both get plus two from being within ten feet of Kel. Okay, that makes it twenty-six. Oh Jesus! Wait, so I was only supposed to roll once. Yeah, just once. Oh. Oh yeah, like three. Three. Yeah. Okay. So as you both turn this corner and this pulsating crystal emanates out, this cold wave of cold energy. And you will feel it wash over you. You feel your body start to stiffen up, and you <coughs> will take uh, eight points of cold damage, and halved for you to four. Uh, okay. At that point, I would like to try and back off because I, you know, I just got injured. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? As you guys back off, back around the corner, out of sight of the to- out of sight of this tower, it starts to lower its glow. Did I see what happened to them? I would assume so. You guys would all feel the rush of cold air, yeah, but just I, not the blunt of the wind. That <clears throat> hurt. <laughs> I'd like to turn around the corner and as quickly as possible facing the tower, I'll cast Dispel Magic. Oh, okay. yeah, if you weren't going to, I was, yeah. What is the... I believe after a certain level you have to roll. For, okay? Third level uh, is Dispel Fourth level spell or higher, I have to roll. You to roll. Okay, so it's DC 10 plus spell level. Okay, it is a 6 level spell. Whoa. Woo! That is cocked. Wow. Or it's the equivalent of a 6 level spell. Uh, I rolled a 14. Oh, I add my spellcasting ability modifier, which is 5, so 19. Easy enough. So as you cast it, you watch as the glow just stops. <clears throat> I'll turn it off so that we. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, goon. <clears throat> Good you. I, I didn't. I did not expect that. I thought to get some more damage out of that, but. <laughs> Alright, alright. I'm running away. So before uh, before we go, because I know it is getting close to our, our four hour mark, uh, we can continue your guys' exploration of this and then call it a night, or we can call it a night here and pick up here next session. Totally up to you. Whatever you want to do. I, th- I think we're at a decent point to call it. I don't know about everyone else. Well, I the only caution that I would say, and, and like I'm okay with continuing if you guys want to, but I know that Lissa just said she's okay. Zach, you are also an hour ahead. Those are considerations to take into effect. But if you guys well, are all cool well. with it, yeah. I mean, it's up to you guys. I'm I mean, cool I with clocking out. I think this is actually a good moment. I don't know. I, I but. Yeah, it feels pretty good, and I didn't get a whole lot of sleep, so, I mean, that's, that's, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but... No, I, that's why I wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. This felt like a good spot for me, so... 
throw it out there. But also, if you guys were, were on the brink of wanting to know what the hell is all in here, then I'll up for it. No, I think the mystery is built to the point where we can't not return. Yep, that's true. Expect good attendance. <laughs> <laughs> because now we want to know what the fuck's happening. Yeah, 110% attendance. I will come twice. This whole campaign is going to swap to that Dragonborn school. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, man. I figured when they, when the, when I forget who brought that up, but when one of you geniuses brought that up, I was like, oh shit, you're right. I don't need the rest of the body. Time to crush. Because I don't know if that. Head. Yeah, I could just I could just basically be told through the speak with dead to fuck off, but it might be something more. Like I don't know, who's got a huge sword that's embedded in their chest and they've been specifically moved to that spot? Who? How do you get that important? How does so that happen? Well, well yeah. there's no blood on it too, so. Yeah, I know. Speak with dead will reveal all. Five questions. So yeah, guys, that was session one. Thanks, Matt. I yeah, thank you. Man. Oh, great. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That's all. Yep. All for tonight. Uh, you will. Original plan is to play Sundays. Sounds like we're gonna have to figure out a different day, which is perfectly fine with me. We'll 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 talk, figure it out. I'll make some posts in the Friday night at Discord, so those that do want to watch can continue to. But. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I'm looking forward to see where this goes. Yeah. Thanks again, Matt. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. But Thanks. thanks for everyone in chat. Have a good night, and for those of you that catch the VOD afterwards, because for some reason everybody over mid over the the late hours of the night for some reason watch the VOD. But you guys all have a good night, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>